All right, so welcome, welcome everybody. My name is Marnie Hernandez and we are doing our certificate workshop today. Today, uh, we are finishing our new, um, uh, uh, Ken, or Kenya. We're finishing Kenya. Um, if you haven't completed Kenya, I'm going to show you uh, where all our recordings are. So that way you can catch up. So if you're not part of our incentive voucher group, that's open to everybody. It's a way for you to get in and, and um, help promote your business. Okay. There's a training under guides. Um, on how to use these vouchers and stuff, but I'm not going to go into that right now. I'm just going to show you um, where the link is for all the trainings that we've done, okay? So this is the Incentive Voucher Group. When you get in here, make sure you answer the questions. But if you go to Featured, um, you can go down here, and there's a spreadsheet. Also, if you haven't signed up for an accountability partner, that's right there. Uh, but right down here is our... Um, spreadsheet so see these are how the vouchers work okay guys so check that out um but right down here right here all right so as i say we're on kenya number four okay so you go down here to kenya as you see in yellow those are ones we're doing this month the ones in orange are kind of um uh they're problem ones that we haven't been able to get into okay um, so right here, Kenya part, um, this is actually part three, so she doesn't have it loaded yet, okay, um, but let me share this screen, this with you, copy, okay, so here's, and she'll be loading it, Sandy's really good at keeping up on these, okay, her mother just passed away, so um, I'm giving her, you know, she's has an excuse right now, so it's so sad, but um. But yeah, she's amazing. She's taken um, really good care of um, the vouchers, keeping people up to date on these certificates. Um, but right here on my YouTube channel are also, um, oh my gosh, then I have to sign in on this, um, is where I record it. So uh, Saudi Arabia, I got to post that because uh, I just renamed that one today. Uh, so let me go ahead and... I don't know how to turn these off where you have to um, verification, but yes, it's me. All right, so this is my YouTube channel and I record everything. So again, I'm gonna do the new um, with the presentation. I have my old presentation in there, but that was with the $49. As you know, it's, it's now gone up to $69.95. So I'm gonna do a presentation for that. But as you see right here, um, videos, Kenya part three, part two, thank you. It had to have been um, uh, uh, Timon, Rick, because uh, Pumbaa was still sleeping. All right, so right here, copy. So this is my YouTube channel, okay? Uh, so as you see here, Kenya part three, and then down here, Kenya part one and two, okay? So, and then the incentive voucher training, accountability training, profit agility. We wanna get off by 11, guys. I want you guys to <clears throat> be sure to get on this training today, okay? You guys wanna make money in your pocket today? Yanni just made $1,800 on one booking, okay? on an instant commission. That means she got the money today, okay? So what I'm trying to tell you guys is please, please, please get in and um, and watch these trainings. Uh, let me see, I know she posted it in Evolution. So this is at 11. Uh, she does record them too, but it's always great to get on the live ones so you can get um, the information, okay? All right, let me see right here. Okay, Yanni, pop up at 11 today, learn start to finish. I just did $1,800 today in her pocket, okay? So she's going to teach you how to um, do an invoice, collect the payment, get the flights, and, and the profit agility. That's the one we go over where you can get those condos for like $138, sell them for, she probably sold it for $2,000, you know, and she made $1,800 on the deal. So make sure you do this, okay? Yeah, paid instantly. They're called instant commission, daily commission. And, and I try to stress that to all the new agents because, you know, you want to make enough, at least you're 69 to cover your monthly, right? 
So if you do one of these, you know, or, or like right here, she did 1800, that's covering for a year, you know? So what I'm saying is, um, yeah, um, Yanni's very good at it. Tommy Joe is really good at it. Um, they live on them, you know, tickets to the, the you know, Knott's Berry Farm. I, I use an example, $80 they're going for. We get them for 40, you sell them for 60, you save your client 20 and you just made 20. So you sell five of those, you make a hundred bucks a day. Hold on. Sorry, I put the TV on for the dogs to keep them company. I'm telling you, they're spoiled. But I don't know what I'm going to do when I get into Nebraska and have to go to work and leave them in the motorhome. But anyway, they have a dog park and stuff. Okay. All right. So just wanted to share that with you guys today. Make sure you join it. Um, it's at 11. So hopefully we'll be done here and we can all go to that. Okay. All right. So again, um, if you haven't done Kenya, they're right here. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and finish it. Okay. So you're going to go into your My OTT. Okay. Um, let me get to the link. Da, 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 da. Um, also, if you're brand new with us here, guys, uh, just wanted to share with you, um, you know, we do these four times a week now. Um, the new schedule is right here. Let me show you that. Um, I think it's right here under pictures. And um, make sure to go in and register ahead of time if you can okay uh so that way you can make sure that you know you're ready to go okay so right here um so today uh we are doing kenya on tuesday uh we're going to uh do santa monica uh tuesdays are kind of like u.s places fridays we're doing uh cruises if you miss margarita they'll get in and do it we're actually doing a uh uh, cruise uh, seminar at sea. I'm doing it in October. There's uh, one each month. So that's kind of fun. You get to go on a tour, go onto the ship, spend two nights on the ship and stuff. So definitely watch that one. And then Saturdays, Sir Days, <laughs> um, we're doing um, other outside destinations. Uh, we do um, programs also, uh, like right here, really quick. Um, down here, the um, special needs at sea. Great, great, great program to get certified in. A great niche. Not very many people are doing it. So get out there and market that you are now a special needs um, uh, travel agent and you can help them. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and click on um, our training. Okay. So let me go over here. Da, 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 da. So what do we want? We want destinations. Okay. All right. So we're going to do Kenya. All right. So you can either look right here, launch course. Uh, you can type up here. And also, guys, just so you know, you can do these all on your own, too. But why? You know, I mean, um, the other day we had, I think, like 70 people on. So it's kind of fun when we do it together because, again, you learn, um, you help each other, you, you know, you get to know other agents and stuff. So it's kind of fun. OK. All right. So we um, we have completed this first one. So we're going to go here to Magical Kenya Specialist. So that's what happened uh, yesterday. Like Saudi Arabia was real quick. But then you can go in and become a specialist and do more, okay? So you're going to register, log in again, okay? I've already registered. So go ahead and log in. Okay. So we got 180 points. Is everybody there? Or does anybody um, uh, have more? Some of you may have already finished. So you're going to go down here. We've completed all these, okay? So you're going to go down. Uh, magical can you see all okay so let's go ahead and go to training in progress okay so let's go down here completed all right come on where are we training 200 look at olga she's ahead of us all right so right here so we're going to hopefully finish this today okay we have a kind of a long one here but these are real short Okay, so we'll get through these and be on our way. Oh my gosh, more, more, more. All right, <laughs> so let's get going because we want to get done in time, right? So again, if you're new with us, 
um, hopefully you can get into this. If not, you may have to come back, um, but at least you know what it's about. Um, okay, Ryan, why can't you register? What's, what's it say? And you should be able to, here, let me log out real quick just to show you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna register, okay? So you're gonna click register. Ah, is that what it's giving you? Ah. Is it giving you an error like that? Yes, me too. <laughs> no. All right, and you guys never logged in already or, or have you? No, oh. not into online training. Yeah. But it, it let me make an account for Magical Kenya Travel Specialist, but that's okay. it. Okay, well, then you can go back. Um, so as long as you're able to get into what we're doing today right here, then you should be okay. And then you can go back and finish that first one. So if you're if you're able to register here, try here, guys. See if it'll allow you to register here. Do this one. Yeah, I've been trying to register for online training since yesterday. It's been like that since okay. that happened. Yeah, I don't know. And then again, it's a holiday weekend. So of course, nobody's probably in the office. So um, so hopefully you guys can get in. Let me know if you guys are able to register here and go, get, go through with us here. Um, again, just so you guys know, the great part about doing these and finishing them, that's the main thing. You want to finish them. Like for California, we're going to hopefully finish that either Tuesday or next Tuesday. And uh, they send a, a welcome package to your house. Um, one of our agents also attended a webinar and got a whole box. Um, she was one of the lucky winners, got water bottles, got um, a, a wine opener, got, got a, a you know, a shirt, all kinds of stuff. You get invited on fam trips. So, you know, the, the Bahama paradise that I talked about, um, all of us that got on that training, um, you know, prior to COVID, there was a hundred of us because it maxed out. We all got the free cruise. Okay. So this is Margarita now at sea. It changed from Bahama Paradise. But what I'm saying, guys, is you can get in here and you'll get invited. Like I said, we're do I, I put myself under experience for a seminar at sea right here, seminar at sea. You get to go on the ship, welcome reception. You get to um, do a tour of the resorts in the Bahamas, okay? And then you have your whole evening to yourself. And it's only $129 and you get to write that off because it's a work trip, okay? You're learning, okay? So again, take advantage of these. Um, so besides learning and helping your clients, you get perks out of the deal, okay? All right, so did you guys end up getting in here and are you good? And if so, what we're doing is demand segments. Perfect. Um, Quintella, yes, like in this case, on this one, yes, you can. It says, and one guest. So again, you have to pay attention. Sometimes it's just agents only. Sometimes, um, you know, it's it's uh, bring a guest, cruises. Sometimes you can bring up to three guests, okay? Because you have a full cabin. Um, so keep that in mind. And, you know, again, that's why a lot of agents, um, their spouses, um, significant other, their child will sign up with them. So now they get the perks and get to go together. Okay. So again, um, you know, that's what I always stress. I've now have my son didn't want any part of it. He's a detective here in Vegas. I don't want any part of it. Guess what? He's going to Disney World next next month or this month for a um, soccer tournament for his girlfriend's um, brother and sister. And he's like, we get free tickets to Disney World. I'm like, yeah. And Universal Studios. And he goes, OK, sign me up. <laughs> So, so they did the training and um, guess what? They're now um, specialists and uh, going to Disney World. They got their, uh, uh, with Disney World, you get one free ticket, hopper pass for one day or a three day um, or a one to 10 day half off ticket. And that's Disney World, okay? So again, guys, take advantage of these perks. All right, if you're just joining us, um, get in here. And um, if you're not registered, register here. Let me go back, sorry. Um, it looks like you can get in, um, but what I want to stress is you need to make sure you finish. We're on um, number four of Kenya, okay? We're gonna hopefully finish today. 
Um, but if if you haven't done one through three, it is going to be here on this here and on my YouTube channel right here. OK, so here is Kenya three and one and two because you want to get your full certificate. OK. All right. So um, I'm going to start reading. Um, we read and we have video. Uh, make sure you're following along. Make sure you're to a place where you can take the test, guys. We want to make sure that you all pass the test, okay? Uh, Sunny, are you good? Um, I just sent you the link. We're going to get started on demand seg segments. What you do is click training, and then you go down here, and we're here, okay? We've already finished the other ones. So we're going to start this course. It's a kind of a little long one, um, and then the other ones are real short, okay? All right, if anybody else needs anything, ask in the chat box. We're all here to help you. Um, again, don't leave us, guys. Let's finish this up and get your certificates. And then uh, Tuesday, we're going to be doing California. So hope to see you then, OK? All right, and as I said, I just read. And then as you see at the end, we do take a quiz, and I'll make sure everybody passes. All right, so introduction. What you're going to learn is about Kenya. Um, and the type of clients who may want to experience the country's unique experience, okay? So this module will help you to narrow down on who your ideal client is, what experience they might be interested in on a trip to Kenya. Kenya is a unique destination at the heart of Africa and is suitable for diverse clientele with the diverse landscapes, um, mild weather all year round, abundance of wildlife in urban and remote locations, as well as renowned hospitality of the Kenyan people. Kenya is one destination Africa that travelers keep in their bucket list. Yes, it's on mine. I want to do those safaris, right? All right, you should see that, you know, you get to stay under the stars and everything, or um, we talked about the elephant um, orphanage. Oh my gosh, that's what I want to do. All right, so Kenya's unique destination in the heart of Africa with such and diverse destinations and experience. No wonder it appeals to a diverse clientele who come to Kenya for varied reasons, okay? Here are some examples of the type of travelers who are attracted by a holiday to Kenya and their travel motivations. And again, if you're new, um, and I don't know if you know this, but holiday in Europe and stuff is considered your vacation. They call it a holiday, but it's actually on their vacation, okay, time. So um, it's not holidays, you know, like Christmas and New Year's or whatever. So just wanted to share that just in case you're new, because I didn't know that until after I learned some things, okay? So, all right, show off. So again, your job now is, you know, you're going to try to find out how to market, okay? And again, once you get your certificate, you're going to share this stuff. You're going to say, oh my God, God, look at this. All right, so personality, a feel. Um, I like feeling unique, special, and ahead of the pack. Then you have the travel expectations. I'm looking for an active, adventurous, and energetic trip without forgetting the need for social recognition. You have the glamorous traveler, okay? Uh, I need to be the best praise for the success that I achieve. And then I'm looking for a glamorous organized trip to get away from it all. Only the very best will do to impress my peers. Okay. Wow. Kind of like a Gucci, right? All right. Authenticity. You have the culture lover. I like to test my boundaries, explore and achieve independent expectations. I'm looking for a trip where I can engage with new cultures and with locals in sheer beautiful nature. Then you have the carefree adventure. That's kind of like me. Uh, like to enjoy myself without worrying about the consequences. Just live each day, right? In a trip, I'd like to do adventurous activities, hiking, trekking, discover new places, cultures, and intriguing foreign countries to get away and disconnect, okay? All right. Ba, ba, ba. How about relaxing? Okay, so I need to know my peers accept me for who I am. Feeling welcome. They need to do spell check. Have you noticed there's been a couple of us? <laughs> All right, travel expectations. I'm looking for a relaxing trip to be on the beach in nature or in a peaceful countryside with my family. How about security and comfort seekers, okay? I have to feel relaxed, tranquil, and safe, okay? I'm looking for a relaxing trip that allows me to experience new things, but with comfort, okay? Look, isn't that beautiful? And then have a lion or a giraffe come up to you. 
<laughs> All right, what about multi-generation and family travelers? Okay, so travelers with children that are 10 years or older and grandparents who yearn to go on a safari will find a family vacation in Kenya to be one of the highlights of a lifetime. It is important, however, with both children and the elderly for travel agents to find out as many details as possible about how taxing a trip might be both physically and mentally before booking a multi-generational family trip. Consider the types of accommodations. For example, find out if the lodge is built on an incline or has several stairs as well as how much time will be spent each day on a safari versus the comforts of the lodge. Uh, for safety reasons, most safari outfitters and private game reserves don't accept children under certain ages, usually under eight, okay? So remember that, that may be a test question. Okay. All right, nature enthusiasts. It's all, it almost goes without saying that those who travel to Kenya are nature lovers, pet owners, hiking enthusiasts, Folks who enjoy the local natural history museum will, generally speaking, enjoy the safari experience. Kenya is, of course, home to the Big Five, which can be spotted in some of the country's best reserves, but it is also home to stunning natural surroundings. After a few days in the bush, the sights, smells, and sounds of the wilderness awaken visitors to a life in tune with nature. Um, by the day, they'll be thrilled by the roar of a lion, and by night, they'll witness a starry sky so clear they'll want to stay up way past their bedtime to enjoy the view. All right. Bucket list travelers. Okay. Everyone has a type of client who is always thinking about their next dream vacate destination. Safari in Kenya tops many people's ultimate travel bucket list. And usually along with that safari, there is some mention of witnessing the magic of the great wild beast migration. So book your cocktail party clients on a trip to Kenya with time to see the migration and they will undoubtedly thank you for it and tell all their friends and neighbors. Okay, great idea, right? Go ahead and take a copy of that. How about honeymooners? Newlyweds can experience the allure and adventure on their honeymoon in Kenya, touring historic Nairobi, including the Najong Hills, where much of the film was set. Then venturing out into the bush to some of Kenya's most renowned wild park or wildlife parks and cons conservancies. Most reputable lodges offer fantastic honeymoon programs and will even arrange private sundowners and picnics in the bush and champagne and romantic star beds for newly married couples on their honeymoon. How about luxury travelers? Okay, with money, with people with money, right? For a time, the focus for most lux um, travelers was opulent accommodations, white linen dining, and silver service. While those requirements remain, the new lux traveler is more concerned with authenticity and uniqueness. A Lux Safari client in Kenya would be seeking out once in a lifetime moments personally crafted for them. Like a hot air balloon ride over the Masa, um, Masai Mara at the crack of dawn with a picnic brunch in the savannah afterward. Hella tours across Northern Kenya or horseback riding safaris across the open savannas. Most luxury hotels, camps, and lodges in Kenya also offer game drives in private vehicles without other clients on board or spa treatments in one's room after a long day in the bush. The sky's the limit when it comes to luxury in the land where safaris were started. Sounds wonderful, huh? How about first time visitors to Africa? Okay, so now get your, you know, your clients. Hey guys, have you ever been to Africa? Let me share this with you. So Kenya is ideal for getting one's feet wet. Two weeks in Kenya with the best in wildlife reserves, national parks, such as Zambozali. And again, if you're new with us guys, please um, forgive me for my pronunciations, okay? Zambozali, Samburo, and the Maasai Mara, plus a visit to the world-renowned destination in Mount Kenya areas, plus a few days on the Kenyan coast. Will be perfect first taste of Africa for your novice safari clients. Each national park in Kenya has something unique to offer from wide open savannas, teeming with game and sand dune deserts to stunning white sand beaches and scenes of snow-capped mountains. Kenya is one of the few places on earth where you can experience all of this in one country. 
and then have our repeat visitors, okay? Majority of travelers to Kenya are repeat visitors. We look, ride the camel, see the giraffe. The sheer diversity of regions, people, landscapes, wildlife, and general experiences cannot all be captured in one visit. Hence the reason for a second and third trip to Kenya. There is a lot to see and do even in the destination where your clients have already visited. Example, game drives can be replaced with a balloon safari, horseback rides, hella tours, while destinations in the southern circuits can re be replaced with destinations in the northern circuits. Different types of accommodations can also be interchanged while the elements of the itinerary can be diversified to provide even a richer experience aligned to the specific needs of the travelers. Solo travelers and women travelers, okay? Solo traveler is becoming the norm and the different accommodation facility attractions and tour companies in Kenya have adapted to cater to this unique group of clientele, whether it is in the cities, the remote locations, and even in the beach destinations. Then you have special interest travelers, okay? Um, need um, Travelers' need can be as diverse as their individual motivation, ranging from those seeking hard adventure sports such as athletic and golf. Oh, no, it says my internet's unstable. I hope they're not working in there. Ugh. All right, let me know if you lose me or if you, I start fading out. All right, wildlife observation, culture and heritage and wellness, among others. Luckily, Kenya is never short of unique experiences for travelers. Safaris can be tailor-made to address these specific needs and ensure a memorable experience for a wide range of travelers. All right, so lots of variety, right, guys? So again, make sure you get out there and sell this, okay? All right, general itineraries and options. So you have the Heart of Africa, iconic safaris. Kenyan soul, wild Kenya, warm and hospitable people, unique nature, great lakes, deserts, rift valley, safaris, breathtaking landscape, and stunning scenery, diversity of wildlife, bird watching, world famous animals, wild the beast, lions, giraffes, rhinos, flamingos, etc. The key target, those looking for the real Africa, untouched, untamed, raw, and exciting. You have um, a sense of adventure, okay? Um, oops, sorry. All right, about discovery, exploring what Kenya has to offer, off beaten track, gaining memories, deserts, forests, mountains, camping out, animal and bird watching, photography, hiking, trekking, biking, running with Kenyans. Key target, many age groups, outgoing people, seeking new experiences, broaden horizons, be amazed, having something. My phone? Um, broaden horizons, be amazed, having something to talk about back home, okay? Then you have bird of paradise, bird paradise, sorry. <laughs> about experiencing the vast diverse, yes, okay, there you go. All right. Uh, about experiences, vast diversity of birds that Kenya has to offer from ostriches and flamingos to birds of prey and rare indigenous species, the key target. Birding enthusiasts, lovers of nature, organized bird watching tour groups, um, and B, this is a specialist hobby area and more likely to be booked through a travel agent tour operator specializing in birding, okay? And then you have coastal paradise, okay? Coastal, relax, relaxing and unwinding, pristine beaches, avoiding stress, safe resorts for families, food, drink, seafood, all inclusive, water sports, fishing, diving, charming, coastal towns, adding other experiences into the mix, coastal safari, big five of the sea, inland safari, day trips, etc. Add experiences when desired. Key target, families, blends um, relaxation with whatever else is desired. Then you have cultural and historical immersion about experiencing the culture Kenya has to offer, the history, the vibrant cities, tribes, food and drink, old forts, Swahili ruins, festivals, UNESCO, tea and coffee tours, getting in touch with Kenyan. You could, it's, my driver's license is um, under the uh, RV paperwork. All right, sorry. For people who wish to learn and be educated all ages, singles, couples, tours, engaging the sense of discovery, cradle of um, discovering history, cradle of mankind and being there. 
Then you have premium luxury, un upmarket and shh, expensive packages, glamping, private personal safaris up close with animals, pristine beaches, fine dining and wine, luxury lodges, camps, eating under the stars, particularly um, couples or groups of friends for the key target looking for time to themselves away from others desire service and attention away from tourists prepared to spend um to achieve this honeymooners are one good target to hit okay and then positive footprint about sustainability and conservation protecting environment volunteer holidays that's kind of fun you can volunteer to go help out and um a lot of times you get paid or you get to stay for free if you volunteer getting hands dirty, contributing something, giving something back, living, working, eating with locals can involve sponsorship, particularly young couples and singles, eco-conscious, caring, doing something different, intimate and responsible connection to nature. All right, so um, key targets, guys, okay? So pay attention to that, who you're gonna target to, okay? And again, do one each week, do one every day, you know? Hey, luxury, you know, or hey, adventurous. All right, how about sports and adventure enthusiasts? So you have rock climbers um, at Mount Kenya. Mountaineers, adventure seekers alike are up for challenge of scaling the heights of Mount Kenya, the second highest peak in Africa. You have Marallel car Camel Race and Bike Race. <laughs> um, in Subaru uh, territory in the Northern Desert, the Turkana people hold the annual Marala Camel Derby. A cycling race is also now held concurrently with the Derby, with mountain bikes racing over demanding course. Wow, look at that, the Lua Marathon. Okay, half marathon and children's marathon take place at the Lua Wildlife Conservation annually in June. This event hosts up to 1,200 runners from over 20 different countries and is regarded as one of the toughest marathons in the world. Then you have fishing, deep sea fishing off the Kenya coast in the Indian Ocean is a huge attraction for amateur and professional anglers alike and is reported to be some of the best in the world. Billfish, such as marlin, sailfish, broadbill, swordfish, and shortbill spearfish are common in this area. How about whale watching? Okay, during the months of August, okay, remember that, August, September, and October, pods of migrating whales can be spotted off the Kenya coast. You can also expect to see dolphins throughout the year, sorry. In fact, there are 17 different species of dolphins and whales to be found here, including the bottlenose dolphin, whale sharks, and the occasional killer or sperm whale. How cool is that? All right, how about whitewater rafting? Without a doubt, the best river for whitewater rafting flows from Mount Kenya. The Uasu Nijiro is tremendous for rafting down the river and game viewing at the same time. Scuba diving, wow, lots to do there, right? Everything. Two marine parks off of Kenya's Indian Ocean coast, one at Watamu on the north coast and the other Kasit Mumpunga Marine Reserve located off the coast of Diana, the Diani toward the Tanzanian, Tanzanian border. Both boast incredibly beautiful and extensive coral reefs. These are prime spots for scuba diving and sport and spotting creatures such as butterfly fish, which come in a vast array of different, usually bright colors. There are approximately 114 species in total and divers can also find surgeon fish, trigger fish, angel fish, and parrot fish. Then you have kite surfing. The Kenya coast has two trade winds called Kusi and Kaskazi that blow at different times of the year. The Kusi from May to November, and the Kaskazi from December to April. These conditions are perfect for sports such as kite surfing with several companies able to rent equipment for those wanting to try the new sport. How about trekking? Many places in Kenya that are excellent for trekking. The Laragi Hills standing over the shores of the Lake Navia, uh, Naivasha is perfect hiking terrain. And then you have mountain biking hot on the heels of, of horse riding safaris come mountain bike safaris. 21st century adrenaline buzz without the confines of a vehicle around you. There's a serious thrill in feeling up close and personal with the wildlife, especially in the Mount Kenya region. 
How about horse riding safaris have been popular for decades, haven't declined in popularity as it is a fantastic way to get close to the wildlife. Camel um, safaris are also a very popular way to travel through the bush, particularly in Lycopia like and Saburo. Gifted local guides for whom um, a camel train through a wilderness is a way of life. Accompany groups and introduce them to the bush and the local wildlife. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. How about hot air ballooning? For once, that once in a lifetime experience, clients can take a hot air balloon ride at dawn over the plains of the Masa Mara. Not only is this really exclusive experience often ending with a champagne bush breakfast, but since the balloon glides silently over the plains, you will be get amazing game viewing as the animals are not startled as they might be with a four by four. That would be amazing, right guys? You're up in the air, so you don't have to worry about jumping in the thing either. <laughs> All right, how about a walking safari? Walking safaris allow visitors to get up close and personal from, with the wildlife rather than game drive from a four by four. Completely unrestricted view of the landscape and the thrill of being within a couple meters of giraffe, zebra, even hippo makes this popular choice for those wanting an alternative to, to, to traditional game drive. And then, of course, golf, 40 golf courses throughout Kenya, many in or around Nairobi. Due to guaranteed sun, even during the short rainy seasons, golfing is an increasingly popular activity. Then you have bird watching. Kenya is one of the top bird destina birding destinations in the world, has varied habitat, tropical rainforest, coastal forest, montane forest, scrubs and grasslands, ranked second after czar for habitat diversity. With over 1,000 species here, Kenya boasts 11% of all birds in the whole world. Though the Rift Valley lakes are mostly known for bird life and particular flamingos, other lesser known areas like the Kakamiga um, National Forest to the west and the Arubuka Sokoka Forest near Wadamu on Kenya's coast offer, often feature on specialist birding itineraries. Ah, how about romance? Okay, again, hit the, the weddings and the honeymooners. Many properties offer weddings and honeymoons. Couples might say, might like to say I do at one of the many beachfront resorts along the coast, or might opt to have a traditional Maasai ceremony in the heart of Maasai Mara National Park, or even up in northern Kenya for a Subaru ceremony. There are multiple options to continue their honeymoon in the destination, whether they want a relaxing beach break or a more adventurous start to married life. Luxury properties, Kenya boasts a wealth of luxurious accommodations, both in the cities along the coast and out on safari. For those looking for luxury accommodations in Nairobi, there are many options in the leafy green suburbs of Karen and Legata. Also in the wetlands area to the north of the city, you will find smaller high-end properties to suit the luxury client. On the coast, you can find gorgeous boutique resorts with some offering butler service to ensure clients want for nothing. Some of the tenant camps you'll find on safari give a whole new meaning to the term camping. Often limited to 10 or less rooms, high-end camps have all modern conveniences, including Wi-Fi, hot wa running water, and fantastic dining. Then you have conservation, okay? So um, this is what I was talking about, the orphanage. Um, David uh, Sheldrick Elephant Orphanage and Wildlife Trust, founded in 1977 by da Dime, da Dame Daphne Sheldrick in memory of her late husband, David, the first warden of Savo East National Park. This wildlife trust is mainly known for its orphan project and protection of elephants and rhinos. As well as visiting the orphanage, it is also possible to adopt an elephant, which means you can access the orphanage outside normal visiting hours. How fun would that be, huh? Save the elephants, elephant watch camp, eco luxury and ecotourism combined with conservation at this camp, which is heavily involved in the protection of elephants throughout the um, through the charity. Save the elephants who are located just downstream from the camp. 
Born Free BOMA building, okay? The Born Free Foundation Big Cat Project gets big cats out of the tiny cages and brings them to Africa to live. One way the charity can min minimize the conflict between humans and wildlife is through their work and make lion-proof BOMAs, which offers simply cost-effective approach to protecting livestock from predators at night. Aww. All right, how about Watamu Turtle Conservation? The Turtle Watch is the flagship program of the Local Ocean Trust. It was started by local residents in 1997 to protect nesting sea turtles. Now it consists of a nest monitoring and protection program by Catch Net Release Program and Specialist Rehab Center for Sick and Injured Sea Turtles. The combination of these programs enable the charity to make a real difference in ensuring the future of endangered sea turtles. How about the culture? Let's learn about their culture. The people, the Kenyan people are friendly, hospitable people with a fantastic grasp of the English language alongside their mother tongue, Swahili. They are happy to share their culture and traditions and it is an important part of the experience of being in Kenya. You have the cultural experiences. Kenya offers a rich variety of cultural experiences with many lodges offering the opportunity for clients to visit local communities to learn about how they support them through social initiatives. It's possible to visit schools, go to a traditional village, or walk with the herds when they are going out to pasture in the morning. Occasionally, it's even possible to take part in a traditional ceremony. Vibrant cities of Nairobi and Mombasa. Nairobi's reputation precedes it, and yet Nairobi is an essential element of the Kenyan experience. It's a vibrant city and cosmopolitan city full of attractions, both natural and cultural. In Mombasa, the traveler will be captivated by the mixture and acceptance of varied cultures, its history, coast, coastal, metropolitan flair, and vibrant nightlife. Discover the narrow streets in Mombasa in an experience that the traveler will never forget. Um, the visit to Fort Jesus, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is highly recommended. And then you have Kenyan tribes, 44 distinct tribes within 70 different ethnic groups in Kenya. The Maasai, Turkana, and Samburu are pa pastoralists and have kept their old traditions. The Swahili tribe is pro pro predominant on the Indian Ocean. All right, guys, so ready for the test? Is everybody ready? We'll go ahead and take this quiz. Da, da, da. All right, Mount Kenya is the highest mountain in Africa, true or false? False. If it's false, what's the, what's the highest one? That's true, that's false, false is true. <laughs> How many species of birds does Kenya have? Over a thousand. Over a thousand. Very good. What species does Born Free Building Conservation protect? Big cats. Big cats. You guys, is anybody old enough to watch that movie, Born Free? Very sad. Very sad. The movie is. No, okay. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I watched it probably 50 years ago. Okay. Uh, how many? Huh? 44? 44 or 14? 44. 44. Thank you. How many different species of whale and dolphin can you find off the Kenya coast? What was it? 17. Okay, let's try it. Very good. Look how good you are. Five out of five. Did everybody get it? Guess what? You get another certificate, okay? Download your certificate, guys. Um, again, stay with us. We're gonna finish. We're gonna get our full specialist program, okay? So download your certificate and then continue. Watch this. Come on, loading, loading. Okay, there we go. All right, here's your certificate. Maybe. I've been printing all my certificates together. Perfect. All right. Yeah, make sure because right here, Magical Kenya. So yeah, when you're done, you can print like Disney. You know, you print all eight of your certificates and like, look at me, guys. I'm a specialist. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so go to continue now. All right. 
Let's finish this up. Let's get her done. All right, start the course. Adventure experiences. All right, so start. Do, do, do. Authentic canvas for adventure activities. Excellent. Hiking, climbing on the inland, marvelous, kite surfing, snorkeling, diving along the coast. Other adventure activities include walking, running, biking, horseback riding, fishing, windsurfing, kayaking, rafting, which are also readily available and easy for visitors to engage in. For true adventures, there's also bungee jumping, whitewater rafting, four, boat, four by four off-road driving, and paragliding. Perfect adrenaline pumping complement to a safari or beach experience. All right, so you have the breathtaking scenery. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Adventure enthusiasts will get to experience breathtaking landscapes from the snows of Mount Kenya, the beautiful Indian Ocean coastline, the Great Rift Valley, the tip Typography, topography of the landscape, so diverse where travelers can explore desert plains, lush forests, mountains and hills, stretches of white sandy beaches and savanna woodlands, all in one vacation. Kenya is perfect for hiking, trekking, cycling, biking, and running experiences. Nope, oh, already ready for a quiz. That was quick, huh? All right, Kenya is perfect for hiking, trekking, cycling, biking, running experiences, or all of these. Um, all of these. Yep, that is correct. Very good. All right, now we're going to go into biking and cycling. All right, given the country's steep topography, um, it's somewhat surprisingly how popular pastime cycling is in Kenya. It's not uncommon to see road cyclists and mountain bikers, both tourists and locals, weaving through the Nairobi streets. However, the greatest cycling experience in Kenya is on quiet paths in the Rift Valley or Laikapia or along the Indian Ocean coastline. In recent years, cycling has gained popularity and many Nairobi locals ride out together to the Nijong hills. They ride dirt um, trails through the bush in the Great Rift Valley and on the slopes of Mount Kenya. Uh, bicycle is, in fact, one of the best ways to explore the south coast and surrounding villages. This gives visitors the freedom to explore a bit. Cycling is a popular form of local transport in this region and on most paths and road bikers will encounter other cyclists. Hell's Gate National Park is also a popular place to cycle with the wildlife. You can rent bikes at several spots along the Diani Beach, Malindi, and Watamu from hotels or private bike rental outfits. The region around Lake Navasha is popular for mountain biking and bikes can easily be rented on the spot. Biking, cycling is a great way to get fresh air and exercise as well as gain new perspective on local life. A number of specialist tour operators offer cycling tours, which travel agents can easily book. All right, so where where are the best places to do it? North Rift, you have Itan, Kapa, okay, all those. There are a lot of training camps in this zone. Western Kenya, you go here, Masai Mara, cycling in the grasslands, Rift Valley, Hell's Gate, Central Highland is Nyaruru, and Southern Kenya is Nijong Hills, okay? Next. All right. Um, walking is one of the best ways to explore and experience the landscapes and cities, the people in remote locations in Kenya. So walking is prohibited in most of the national parks. That's kind of weird, huh? And reserves um, and driving is often the only option. However, walking safaris are increasingly offered in smaller lodges and camps in the relatively newer private game sanctuaries, I guess, because they don't want you to get attacked, right? On a walking safari, also known as bush nature walks, clients will spend most of it, not all the time, in the bush on foot. Accompanied by a professional guide and ranger, it is proximity to wilderness that makes the kind of trip so magical and exciting. They take um, place on wilderness trails, which are national trek tracks made by animals and traversed only on foot to maintain their condition. These trails lead to remote areas you wouldn't typically see on a typical safari. In general, walking safaris emphasize the walking culture and scenery rather than big game encounters, okay? Clients interested in walking safaris must factor in their physical condition. They should be in good health, 
should be able to walk between about four and 10 miles a day, depending on the perimeters of the itinerary. Some trips will not allow hikers under the age of 12 or over the age of 60. Most who book a multi-day walking safari will be expected to be, in comfortable, be comfortable in the wilderness and not the sort who is easily rattled. Boy, that kind of makes me sad. I'm almost 60. <laughs> Some of the places where one will experience hiking and trekking right here, Mount Kenya National Park, UNESCO World Heritage Site, Abdir, um, Abadir National Park, the Mount Elhan, um, Kakamega uh, Forest, Mount Lagnat, Hell's Gate National Park, Kirio Valley, and Rabuko Soko National Forest Reserve. Next. Trekking and climbing, delightful ways to unwind while in magical Kenya. From snow-capped mountain Kenya to the dry plains of Lakathia, Kenya is a trekker's paradise. A range of treks from sedate, uh, hill, sedate, sedate hills, walks through wildlife-rich ranges to high-altitude hikes on alpine slopes. Experienced climbers may wish to tackle the mighty peak of Mount Kenya, or one of many other climbs ranging from granite cliffs to volcanic rock to high peaks. Mount Kenya, Africa's second highest mountain, is considered the most challenging climb in Africa and attracts experienced climbers from all over the world, making the summit requires expert guiding and equipment. While any trekker who is in good shape is likely to reach Point Lanana, the accent um, to the summit crest by twin, twin icy peaks called Bashan and Nalian is a serious climb across ice and rock. So yeah, you need to be really adventurous for that, right? Important travel agents should make sure climbers are experienced and use a rep reputable guiding company with all required equipment provided. There are 30 routes to Mount Kenya's summit, but the most common is on the southeast face, approaching the mountain along the Chagoria route. This climb requires a minimum of six days. The final approach to the summit requires an accent, ascent before crossing the large Lewis Glacier to climb to Nillian. And on the following day, a crossing to Bashan is made. North Face Accent, on the other hand, requires a direct assault on Bashan with an overnight camp at the foot of Furman Tower. Mount Eljan, okay, the uncrowded trails and moorlands of Mount Eljan make for excellent trekking. The series of craggy peaks around the caldera makes for an enjoyable climb. Equally rewarding is exploring the forest, the geothermal springs and caves. Trackers should be adequately prepared because the mountain can be cold and rainy despite its equatorial location. There are several established routes on Eljan. Um, but the mountain lends itself to exploration and free hiking. Local guides and rangers are the best resource. The cliffs of Lower Eljan are also ideal for rock climbing. Abadir Ranges and National Park um, is excellent terrain for trek with unique alpine flora and fauna providing captivating eye candy for your adventure. There is also well-marked trail and observation lookout on the stunning Karuru Falls, where trekkers will enjoy sweeping views of the entire Abadir Range and the distant Guru Falls and can proceed along wooden walkways across the lower Chania Falls. Travelers may even opt to take a dip into the chilly waters here. A bit lower in the heavily forested Saliant trekkers will encounter abundant game, both big and small. What's more, the upper slopes here boast open plains that are perfect for walking, rising to a summit of over 13,000 feet at Sadama. There are excellent views across the snow-capped peak of Mount Kenya and surrounding plains and campsite and huts available too. And then Hell's Gate National Park um, is one of Kenya's top national parks where visitors are highly encouraged to explore on foot. It boasts some of Kenya's best rock climbing with high cliffs offering several possible routes and ample opportunity for climbers and hikers. Fisher's Tower, a large volcanic pillar inside the park, is particularly worthy climb. There is a qualified rock climbing guide based at Hell's Gate Park headquarters by Elsa Gate, where equipment can also be rented. So Mount Laganat, 6,800 uh, foot Mount Laganat is an accessible Rift Valley volcano. Astounding views. Okay, thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. Um, go ahead and contact me direct. 
Um, okay, astounding views down into a crater with the mountain. The views from the top across to Navasha and Aberdares are also extraordinary. The climb up Mount Laganat is relatively easy if taken slowly, and the average climber can reach the top in an hour and a half following a clearly marked path. There are break stops with tables along the way here, and once at the top, a further hour can be spent walking around the crater rim with breathtaking views. Um, here, here's my phone number, 702-232-5499. There you go. All right. Have a good day. Happy holidays. Happy 4th of July. There are um, breaks, uh, are break stops with tables along the way. And once at the top, a further hour can be spent walking around the rim, breathtaking views during the entire route. Um, there is also a steep path down to the crater floor. Wow. Uh, Ranger guides are available at the park gate for clients. Longanot is an easy day's track for the adventurous. The crater presents interesting possibilities for abseiling. However, that abseilers need their own equipment and the assistance of a locally skilled guide, which travel agents can book through a reputable adventure tour operator. All right, other notable regions in Kenya. Uh, where hiking and trekking are popular for adventure travelers, include the Mubulia uh, Cons Conservancy, thick woodlands, look out over Safo, the Matthews Range, Highlands in Subaru country, the Loita Hills, the remote south, the Larogi Hills, La Silarola Escarpment, <laughs> Kakamega, um, Forest easily walks a range of trails, Beringo, um, the island birding, Lake Alamentiata, flamingos, other plane games, and Mangaya, crater views of Nakaru from the crater rim. See what I'm talking about? Brr, wow. Oh my gosh, we're losing a lot of people. All right, while well, Mount, Mount Kenya, Mount Elgin, and the Aberdares are superb for alpine climbing, there are hundreds of routes for rock climbers who don't wish to scale an entire mountain. Some of the best rock climbing in Kenya is at Lukenya, just 45 minutes from Nairobi. Here, climbers can explore a variety of climbing route routes, including regions near Mainwall, Upper Cliffs, or Edinburgh. Castle. While the cliffs are located on land owned by the Mountain Club at Kenya, visitors may purchase a daily membership for $2.50 or temporary three-month membership for $20. The area was visited by Halford Makinda in 1899 on his way up to make the first ascent of Mount Kenya and is a favorite amongst rock climbers in Kenya. Another popular rock climbing region is Frog Cliffs on Najong Hills, about an hour from Nairobi. Frog Cliffs has over 100 established routes, all of which are easily defined as they are numbered near Frog Cliffs are two other rock climbing regions worth noting, Nadia and Emberal, which offer routes uh, with varying degrees of difficulty. Both require some hiking, particularly Emberal, which is bushy and somewhat difficult to find. Okay, don't you like my uh, pronunciation of some of these? Like, ah! All right, running is a journey, a way of connecting with ourselves in this world and with the world. Kenya provides a perfect training ground with expert coaching advice, guided runs, coached workouts. The traveler can run one of the most geographically diverse, awe inspiring countries in the world. Introduction one sport for which Kenya is well known it is running long distance marathons. Medium sized country of about 50 million dominates the world in competitive running. Pick any long distance race and you'll often find that up to about 70 to 80% of its winners since the late 1980s have been from Kenya. So you have the Lua Safari Marathon. Travelers, a travel agents with clients who are runners can suggest tying the in the trip with the annual Lua Safari Marathon in Lua Wildlife Conservancy, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that is also one of Kenya's most densely populated wildlife areas. It is regarded by runners world as one of the world's top 10 must do marathons whose runners of all abilities take part widely considered one of the most beautiful races in the world. About 1300 runners usually take part in the endurance test every June. The Conservancy is located north of Mount Kenya at an altitude of over 5250 feet, 5250 feet which makes for a challenging race. The runners must be in excellent shape. Marshals ensure safety in the wildlife areas and participants run on dirt tracks throughout the bush. 
Why participate? Well, participation in the Lua Marathon also helps improve and protect the local community. Since beginning in the year 2000, the event has raised 6.1 million for clean water, medical equipment, and education. While many professional athletes take part, amateurs and running clubs are also welcome to join the challenge. A half marathon is also available. Besides the Lua Safari Marathon, other running events that champion of a course include the annual Nairobi Marathon held in Nairobi in October every year and the Sai Mara Marathon in September every year. The professionals, of course, staggering number of Olympians and long distance marathon runners hail from Kenya Highlands, in particular the small town of Eaton in the beautiful Western Rift Valley. Runners uh, world over can travel to Eaton Eaton, Eaton, and stay at a training facility there, testing their strength and endurance while training with some of the best athletes in the world. Indeed, visitors who travel to Eaton ahead of a major international competition are likely to find runners from across the globe training and have the opportunity to meet and mingle in the addition of miles of soft dirt trails to explore expert training equipment and meals from professional chefs, runners can partake in seminars, specialized workouts, as well as visit local markets, workshops, and schools. Travel agents with clients who are serious runners interested in joining training workshops or experience Kenyan training can recommend one of a number of different programs through the largest and most well-known is High Altitude Training Center. Guests who book a stay here have access to fully equipped gym instructors who offer training sessions every week, also a physiotherapy clinic and a running coach uh, who caters to all levels of fitness and experience. When they're not training, runners may wish to visit the nearby Remo um, National Reserve or the Caruso Hot Springs. Some of the top destinations for running in Kenya include Kapataka, Natan, Kapsabat, uh, Kuroko, Nairahu. <laughs> 10 tips for mar marathon preparation by the GOAT, greatest of all time, Aliad Kaposh. Start training, get a teammate to train with, get physiotherapy, record all your workouts, always try to finish your workouts, do flexibility exercises, audit your workouts, hydrate yourself, walk your talk, feel your body and enjoy every training session. Fun facts about running a marathon. I'm going to take a picture of this because my son, my son and my um, son-in-law are, are going to compete in a marathon. It is the only way to enjoy life. Marathon running is where freedom is in life. A lot of ideas come in during a marathon. Helps a lot in knowing how healthy you are. You get to understand life a very different divine way since, it's, since life is like a marathon, right? Running and finishing a marathon gives you the satisfaction in life. All right. Okay, there we go. All right. Run with a champion sample itinerary. Considerations when developing the itinerary should incorporate the following. Arriving in Nairobi and transfer to high altitude training center, dinner and overnight. Training is twice a day, three days of recovery runs, three days of hard work, one day of easy run, and two days of doing extensive exercises, okay? All right. I'm going to take a picture of this too. Just let them know. Perfect. Okay. Next lesson. Do, 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 do. Horseback and camel safaris. Who doesn't want to do that? Imagine galloping through the incredible wild beast migration on horseback, sharing the wide open plains with the Tower of Giraffes. Well, it's possible in Kenya. So you have horseback safaris. A Kenyan safari on horseback is unique and incredible experience because it allows you to get extremely close to the animals while wild animals may be nervous of human beings on foot or in vehicle, they are more relaxed around horses because the horses disguise one smell. Traveling on horseback also allows visitors to explore beyond the reach of a vehicle and is welcome change from being seated in a vehicle for six to eight hours in a day Safari goers can do a single day horseback excursion or a multi day horseback safari, all of which travel agents can book through a tour operator. On horseback, clients can explore the most remote locations in Kenya using the same pass walk for millennia by nomadic tribes. Horseback safaris allow for unencumbered rides across open country and, of course, the freedom to move with the wildlife. 
from Maasai Mara to Nakapia to Lake Navasha to Mount Kenya. Travelers on horseback will discover a new way of seeing Kenya as close to nature as they can get. Experienced riders confident on both broken terrain while riding athletic horses will be in their element on a horseback safari. The opportunity to see big game and interact with wild animals is an unforgettable thrill. Often in the Maasai Mara, vast herds of wild beasts and zebra extend as far as the eye can see. What's more, the chance to see tribes whose cultures are so different from the West is a fascinating experience. Then you have the sounds of nature. Most horseback safaris are undertaken with mobile uh, tented camps, which are surprisingly comfortable. One of the most unforgettable moments of a horseback safari is the concept of night noises, which accompany sleep. Often you can hear the roar of a lion or the piercing calls of the hyena as you lulled to sleep by the sounds of nature. I know it'd be kind of scary for me, right? All right, um, camel safaris are also another unique way to explore Kenya's wilderness, particularly in Northern Kenya. Walk out into the bush um, with Saburo tribesmen and camels carrying the camp or ride them through the dry riverbeds of Northern, hey, hey, Northern Kenya, sorry. Here, your clients will traverse some of the most remote, breathtaking landscapes in Kenya. The serene journey travels across historic wilderness. Typically, camels and saddles are used. The annual International Morales Camel Derby event held in August is a good place to experience a camel race. Among other um, immersive experiences, such as the Buru culture, bike race, history, and Kenyatta house and wildlife at the Merlai Wildlife Sanctuary. All right, zip lining or forest flying is yet another activity that's getting more and more popular in Kenya with locations throughout the country. So you have forest flying, okay? Zip lining, oops, of forest flying is yet another activity that is getting more and more popular with locations. Kairita uh, Forest, 45 minutes from Nairobi near Kamendi is at the tip of the Abadir Range, has the longest zip line in Kenya with six different lines that run one into another. Another excellent location is the Machacos People's Park with cables suspended 30 feet above ground, excellent views of the park and its environment. Third, there's Lumaru zip line 20 miles outside Nairobi in the Dam Red Hill. The route on the zip line here passes through the actual dam with excellent views of the neighboring towns and an adrenaline filled adventure. Yet another fantastic zip lining location is Rapids Camp, Sagana on the Tana River, about an hour from Nairobi near Nairer. Sagana offers zip lining and a host of other outdoor activities, including kayaking, bungee jumping, and white river white water rafting. Those wishing to zip line on the coast can visit Bufa Beach Resort on Bufa Road, Kalipi. Bufa is among the few hotels in Mombasa with a complete zip lining challenge. The entire process takes about three hours to complete and there's opportunity to see some of the lush coastal vegetarian in the region as you walk back after your zip line challenge. All right, quiz time. Where is the best place to do camel safaris? You guys are paying attention because I don't know. Da, 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 da. Anybody know? Anybody? Should we guess? Camel safaris. Say Western? Nope. Central? Oh, reset. The Lagori Hills is perfect hiking terrain. Track winds their way, tracks wind their way up to a particular escarpment, which is called. Which one is it? <laughs> Anybody? Hmm. Nope. <laughs> Come on, I need help. Where's the best place to do camel safaris? Nope, it's not Southern, Northern. Northern, okay, let's go back. All right, reset, Northern. There you go, thank you. How about the tracks wind their way up to an escarpment, which is called, which one is that? Not that, that one, it's Hell's Gate. 
Let's see hello. Is it that one? Ah, it's that one. Let's see hello. One park in Kenya allows visitors to walk, cycle, or drive themselves in. What is the name of that park? Is it Hell's Gate? Yes. Yay! All right, did you get it? Everybody get it? All right. Next, adventures at the coast. Okay, scuba, snorkeling and scuba diving. Snorkel off the back of Dow or visit one of the many top-notch dive schools of Diani Beach, Nyali Beach, Mabasa, and all these other parts, okay? Um, magnificent Coral Old Marine Park, 80 square miles of coral and tilapia seagrass, home to fish and green turtles. Beautiful um, to city visitors have a good chance of spotting dolphins who will often permit them to snorkel alongside them. So a place for all divers, Kenya's coastal waters are warm all year round. It's possible to dive without a wetsuit, uh, wetsuit almost anywhere through the best period. Though the best period is October to April, with October, November, and March being prime months. Most of the dive bases located in Malindi, Watamu, the coast north of Mombasa and Diani will provide training from a beginner's level and upwards for underwater photographers, in particular, the extensive coral reef is a major attraction. The undersea landscape is quite varied with shallow coral gardens and blue water drop-offs sinking deep into the ocean with visible visibility, generally excellent. We have the coral reefs. Number of world-class dive sites in Kenya and north of Mombasa is home to several. Some of the best sites are in Watamu Marine National Park, a protected area with a reef that's close to shore with accessible shallow coral that are ideal for novice divers and snorkelers. The outer reef here has drop-offs with sheer walls, large brain corals attracting abundant marine life, dives at the central turtle reef, attracting large schools of vibrant parrot and surgeon fish, and divers can occasionally spot white tip sharks. Watamu is also an egg-laying site in the endangered green sea turtle, which lay on the beaches here several times a year. You have amazing wildlife. Nearby, um, More Moray Reef has beautiful overhang dropping several feet to a sandy bottom. The coral here is home to octopus, eel, and massive moray. The sharp reef edge has plenty of nudid branch, angelfish, tang, and the occasional grouper or barracuda. Spectacular dive site is the canyon, a long sandy channel bordered on each side um, by deep drop-offs. There is an arch here covered with soft coral and the reef walls are filled with snapper. Rays and reef shark are here and whale sharks pass through October through February. Um, from June to September, migra migratory, migratory whales from Southern Africa pass through the area and are often seen breaching in deeper waters. A little further down towards Kalifi, there are dive sites at Mawapa and Barracuda Reef. Outer edges here have large shoals of angel and butterfly fish, and there are occasional sightings of white whale sharks. Experienced divers will want to dive at the Vuma Caves near Kalifi Creek, just beneath the surface of the face of the seaside cliffs. The open sea around the entrance is a good place to spot dolphins, while the interior of the caves is a refuge for eels, grouper, and barracuda. After exploring the caves, divers exit through a chimney to emerge through a hole in the reef in the reef above. There are also dive sites along the coast south of Mombasa from Tiwi to Shimoni. Some of the best sites are centered on Kasidi Mpungi Marine Park and reserves where divers can site massive manta rays for experienced divers. The best option here is Nuili Reef, a deep dive with strong tidal uh, currents where spectacular coral snapper, barracuda, and zebra sharks can be seen. Much easier dive is Cassidy Point with its hawksbill turtles and bottlenose dolphins. Almost done, guys, almost done. Paris, um, kite surfing, windsurfing, paragliding surfing. Mombasa offers beautiful beaches, excellent conditions, ideal for both windsurfing and kite sports surfing waves. Swelling the Indian Ocean waters, warm enough to surf without a wetsuit year round. Um, Found conditions are found between May and October with the largest waves, generally July and August. 
Um, these beaches have a number of hotels and surf schools that offer experienced instruction. Galu Beach, which runs along Diani, is considered an ideal spot for kite surfing, while Malindi Bay and Watamu Bay are excellent for experienced board surfers. Though take care, take care not to get too close to the river at Malindi as there are crocodiles and hippos there. Yow. Extremely experienced surfers might wish to take the ferry to the southern side of Mombasi Channel and surf the waves breaking at the harbor entrance from the left and right, wrapping around the pier from the southern winds. So windsurfing has been a feature of the Kenya coast since 1970s with Biani Beach and Sheshal. Uh, north of Malindi are increasingly popular among kite surfing enthusiasts. Several schools along the coast offer lessons in both disciplines and rent gear to experienced surfers. The coast has excellent conditions from December to February with the Northeast monsoon tending to get up in the afternoon. Blowing strong winds, which are ideal for both beginners and experienced riders, while the southeast monsoon blowing from June through September isn't as reliable as the northeasterly. It also makes for exceptional conditions. While paragliding isn't as popular as some other adventure sports in Kenya, it is increasingly in popularity. Some of the best locations to go paragliding include Itan, Kajabi, Mount Olakoa, and Nadaru Mountain. Um, again, I apologize for the pronunciation. All right. Dao sailing commonly found in Lamu has storied history in Kenya where it's significant part of the economy. Lamu is an excellent place to leave your smartphone behind, unwind with only the sound of the Kali or the call to prayer in the background. Dao sailing can include full day excursion or a romantic sunset cruise combining snorkeling and historic ruins. That sounds nice. Also involves a unique experience where you get to sleep on a luxurious dhow and enjoy a meal, freshly caught fish on the beach. A day dhow trip to Wasini Island within the Kisiti Mbundi Marine Reserve in the South Coast can be easily arranged from Diani and Shimoni. Wonderful way to spend the afternoon in Watamu is to take a Dow safari in the mangroves and estuaries of Mita Creek. The waters of Lamu are populated by traditional Latin sail Dows, which are a beautiful way to explore the area. After day on the water, guests um, on a Dow safari sail back to Lamu on the sunsets. Longer Dow safaris throughout the archipelago can also be arranged for the jet set yachting crowd. There are marinas in coastal Kalifi, north of Mombasa, and a popular docking station. All right. Whitewater rafting, kayaking, and canoeing. One of the most exciting adventure activities is rafting expedition. Kayaking and canoeing is more your speed. Kenya has many lakes with mild weather. Perfect for drifting along the waters is one of the most elegant, one of these elegant vessels. So one of Kenya's most exciting is the rafting expedition. Number of places where enthusiasts will get their greatest thrills. Along the Owasso Nagairo uh, River and Tana River is popular, probably the best, with the trips that last anywhere between one day to a week as the rivers wind their way through spectacular white water with up to 30 miles of class two, three, and four rapids in some places and separate stretches of class five water. So whitewater rafting, about 50 miles out of Nairobi, the beginning of the Tani River is Sangana, has some rapids um, ideal for first time rafters and those who want to see birds and other wildlife as they move along. The drifts are a good opportunity for bird watching and over 100 species have been recorded along the riverbanks. The Tana's rapids um, increase in intensity as the river continues. However, with the final section consisting of class four and five whitewater. Meanwhile, rafting at the Owasa Nigerio River also promises game viewing with the river itself, home to both crocodiles and hippos. The banks attract plenty of big game and herds of elephant, antelope, zebra, and giraffe are usually seen along the way. Some rafters here have even seen lions, though it is rare. Kayaking and canoeing uh, is more your speed. Kenya has many lakes my, with mild weather, perfect 
for drifting along the waters. Of course, Indian Ocean canoeing is also fun, and there are many private dams that are mainly built for irrigation that have turned the water resource into canoeing venues. Also, the Athi River near Savao um, National Park, second largest river in Kenya after the Tana River, which flows across the Kapodi and Athi Plains, is viable for both canoeing and kayaking. There's nothing quite like watching elephants and giraffes stroll by you as you kayak down the river. Trips here are best from nearly um, from early April to late July, and then again in late October to January. There's class three rapids, plus plenty of wildlife, including crocodiles. Kind of scary, huh? All right, and then fishing and whale watching, um, diverse range of fishing from common inshore game fish, such as king mackerel, barracuda, rainbow runner, bonito, and several species of trevally to the offshore game fish, such as yellowfin, tuna, aberjack, wahoo, and dorado. So deep fish gaming um, off the Indian Ocean is a huge attraction. Look at that. For um, amateur and professional anglers alike and re reported to be some of the best in the world. Billfish such as marlin, sailfish, broadbill, swordfish, shortbill, spearfish are common in this area off the shores of Malindi and Watamu and beyond the coral reefs is where you'll find some of the best fishing. How about fly fishing? We add the fly to your clients by fly fishing bucket list because there's nothing in the world that can match the air safari taking you to untouched locations inaccessible by land. Fly past Mount Kenya, the highest mountain in Kenya on your way to Lake Ellis, Lake Alice and Fox Tarn. You will catch more than fish. You will get reeled in by enchanting views of the highlands that make up Central Kenya. It is really a fly fishing enthusiast dream come true. And then whale watching during the months of August, September, and October, pods of migrating humpback rails can be spotted off the Kenya coast. You can also expect to see dolphin throughout the year. In fact, 17 different species of dolphin and whales can be found, bottlenose whale sharks and the killer or sperm whale. All right, test time. We're almost done, guys. When is the best time for whale watching off the coast of Kenya? August, September, October. Yes. Whitewater rafting is popular activity. Which two rivers offer this? It was the... Which two rivers? I don't know. I thought it was like a T-net, T-net one. Anybody remember which or two? Maybe it's this one. Nope, not that one. All right, let's reset. August and September. How many trade winds are present on the Kenya coast? Two. All right, which rivers? This one, very good, thank you. All right, did you guys all pass? You got another certificate. Congratulations. All right, we're almost done, guys. Again, look, I think we had 70 on at the beginning, and now we have five. No. <laughs> but at least you guys can say, I did it, I did it. All right. All right, next, 230. Okay, where are we? Ba, ba, ba. All right, these are just five-minute ones, so let's do it. Wildlife and experiences all in one day. Nairobi. Lesson will give you a good overview of the territory. Urban experience, Nairobi is one of Africa's most vibrant and exciting cities with excellent global cuisine. Buzzing nightlife makes up for the great and dynamic entertainment spot. It draws its name from Maasai word and Kari Nairobi, meaning a cool water, a place of cool waters. Nairobi city, capital of Kenya, situated in the southern central, south central part of the country. Nairobi's real claim to international fame is 20 minutes from the city center. You'll find the world's only urban national park. Kenya's capital is one of Africa's largest cities, main hub for visitors who typically overnight here before flying off to wildlife parks on safaris. Though abundant with um, office towers, Nairobi retains, look, I love that, the orphanage. Um, it's colonial charm with buildings such as Norfolk and Stanley hotels, traditional safari lodges um, of the early 19th century. The sites that you can see right here, um, 
Is that the wild beast? Okay. Did you know most of the interest for tourists in Nairobi lies to the south and southwest in the land of the Maasai people, which begins with Nairobi National Park on the city's uh, doorstep. The park makes an excellent day excursion, it includes the Najong Hills, whose beautiful landscape is described in great detail in Karen Blixen's Out of Africa. In fact, Nairobi's outlying township of Karen, named after Blixen, is the location of must-see stops such as the Giraffe Sanctuary, as well as a handful of posh art and antique shops. The name Nairobi um, comes from Maasai phrase Anroki, which translates to place of cool waters. However, Nairobi is popularly known as the green city of the sun. All right, so again, beautiful pictures. All right, selling points. This lesson will go over selling points for the region. Okay, so Nairobi um, National Museum is one of the best museums in the country. It's here um, that one can have a feel of human origins ex exhibited and can also view the near complete Turkana boy, the famous 1.6 million year old skeleton that was found near Lake Turkana in the northern part of Kenya in 1984 by a pal paleontologist. Interact with Orphan Elephants Rescue Wildlife Rehab Program at the David Sheldrick Trust and even adopt one. Tour Nairobi cannot be complete without a visit to the African Fund of Endangered Wildlife, popularly known as Giraffe Center, where one can feed and kiss the giraffe from a specialty built platform. This place is renowned for the conservation of Rothschild species of giraffe. Nairobi National Park, world's renowned park within a city is a must visit for safari lovers who have a few days within the city for conferences and business meetings. Attractions, while there are no denying that most tourists zip in and out of Nairobi and route to safari, the city does have its fill of attractions. Among them, the Nairobi National Museum, great introduction to Kenya and our journey from independence, a glimpse of our cultural diversity at the Bomas of Kenya, a visit of Nairobi National Park and Orphanage for a taste of our wildlife diversity with an option of safari walk that is on the menu for on transit business visitors. You are welcome for a feel um, of close interaction with animals at Giraffe Center and David Shedrick's Elephant Sanctuary Wildlife Orphanage that cares for baby elephants and rhinos whose mothers have been killed by poachers and eventually reintroduced back into the wild. How sad is that? For nature lovers, we have a few forests located within the city where visitors can seek a much needed refuge um, from the daily stress of urban life, get intimate with nature at Karua Forest, commonly known as the green heart and lungs of the Kenya capital. The park is strategically located, provides national amenity, beauty spots for Kenyas and international visitors alike. One can experience farm tours that is not far from the city, such as Kiabethu, tea farm, coffee farms. Um, the garden contains different tea, coffee varieties that are grown in Kenya. A tour of the farm will make you understand the entire process from the farm to the cup. And then other activities and experiences visitors can experience the bygone sophistication of colonial East Africa at Sarova Stanley Heritage Tour or a short Nairobi walk taking you down memory lane of how Nairobi came into being and a tour of the various iconic monuments that are found within the city that gives meaning understanding of what made Nairobi what it is today. How to get there? Flights, international domestic flights available at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport and Wilson Airport connecting Nairobi to all parts of the country. Road, there's very good road network connecting Nairobi to other major cities and towns in Kenya. And then the railway, standard gauge railway has made Nairobi more accessible for other cities and towns. Trains can be booked online and through local tour operators. All right, let's take the quiz. Nairobi is a Maasai word meaning? The first one. Cool, cool waters. What does Enka Nairobi mean? Green city? Place of cool waters. Oh, place of cold water, sorry. Let me reset. Uh, where can you feed and kiss a giraffe? The fourth one. Thank you. Which attraction is not found in Nairobi? 
I think that one's the first one. Very good. How can one access Nairobi? Both. Both. Uh, Nairobi is a place of cool waters, was it? Yeah. Thank you. And this one, same thing? Yeah. Thank you. Where can you experience Kenyan culture in Nairobi? I think that was the first one. Very good. Where can one do sporting activities in Nairobi, such as jogging, walking, and trekking? The, the last one. Very good. Yay, seven out of seven. You got another certificate. All right, guys. Very good. All right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right. Um, okay, so these are interactive training specialists. Okay, so the lakes, let's look this real quick. Okay, it gives you a good overview of the territory. So Western Kenya, massive sacred stones, crying stone, Great meaning to both the Luau and Lum communities, beautiful beaches, uh, site to behold, uh, prehistoric site as UNESCO World Heritage Site in Magori Town. It is the largest best preserved stone settlement ruins um, that was built in the 16th century, served as fort for the local community and defined social entities. So you have beautiful lakes and highlands. Kasumu on the shore of Lake Victory is the main city of Western Kenya and Kenya's third largest after Nairobi and Mombasa. Western highlands rise around Victoria, beautiful views of the tropical forest dotted with a cluster of towns such as Boma, Kisu, and Karuki, Kuroko. This region is probably one of the parts of the country least known to travelers, yet it is filled with great variety and diverse attractions. The region is positioned at Kenya's ecotourism destination. So you have the sites here, okay? Boats, food, do you see that fishy? All right. Next lesson. I like these quick ones, right? All right, uh, unique selling points, uh, wealth of uh, cultural attractions, historical attractions. One of Kenya's most exciting cultural events can be experienced in the region as Rusinga Cultural Festival, bullfighting at Kakamega, creates an unforgettable spectacle. A hike throughout, a hike through the world's famous Kakamega tropical forest, not forgetting the tea highlands at Kariko. Uh, tea farms, the massive sacred stones, um, and the World Heritage Site was recently added. All right, so Western, perhaps the greatest selling point of Western Kenya is Lake Victoria, Africa's largest freshwater lake, 26,000 miles, and Kasumu, a vibrant city at the lakeside, um, the ancestral village of former President Barack Obama, where his father was born in 1936 and where his grandmother still lives. So attractions, in addition to Kokelo, Western Kenya, is home to several parks, including Roma National Park, where one can see Jackson's Hartebeest, and the huge horse-like Rowan antelope, the only place to do so. Uh, Sahil Swamp um, National Park, the country's smallest national park that was created, especially for protection of rare antelope, called Sitatunga. Mount Elgon National Park, which straddles the Kenyan-Uganda border. We're going to be doing Uga 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 Uganda um, on the 16th. In Kuroko and Bomet, recommend a visit to giant tea plantations or venture out to Kakamega Forest for birding and hiking experience. The islands of Rusinga, Mofongo, and Tarekara are a draw for travelers to Western Kenya. Then you have activities, suggest a visit to the museum where it offers displays of local village life, Lake Victoria's aquatic life, recommend a sailing trip on Lake Victoria where they can visit some of the most beautiful islands. Bird watching is also excellent on Lake Victoria and trekking through the Kakamega forest is a must. 
Kakamega is the last significant stand of Guino Cong Conglonial, whatever, rainforest in Kenya, and contains 400 species of butterflies, seven species of monkeys, and hundreds of bird species. In Carico, there's the opportunity of guided tour of the town's plethora of colonial era tea estates. In addition to the off-beaten path, wildlife experiences in Western Kenya and excitement of visiting Obama's ancestral home, numerous cultural experiences in Western Kenya unlike any other. The locals in the Western part of the country are extremely friendly. One of the best places to meet them is an outdoor market. Kasumi's uh, main market is one of Kenya's most animated and certainly one of the largest its clients are curious um, if clients are curious or just looking for essentials. It's worth a visit. Farm tours in Kuroko and Vomet and water sports on the island, which includes boat, kayaking, and windsurfing. How to get there? Flights. You can do Western Kenya accessible through Nairobi to Kasumu, Kakamu, and Katal. A road is accessible by road due to enhanced road network. The water surrounding countries can be assessed by water on Lake Victoria. And then the railway also is enhanced by the Lakeside City. Next, where can you experience tea farm tours in the Western Circuit? Remember? Nope, not that one. <laughs> All right, which of the following is not an attraction in Western Kenya? Hmm. Is it this? Nope, it's not that either. I'm not doing very good on this. Where can you experience the tea farm tours in Western Circuit? Come on, we have five of you on here, four of you. Obviously I'm not a good guesser. I think that one's number two. You were so good. Thank you. Which is Kenya's smallest national park? Was that this one? I think it's this one. Yeah, that one. Which of the following is not found in Western Kenya? Mount Kenya. <laughs> You're so good. Which of the following is not an attraction in Western Kenya? Kitmi Kaye. Yep. Not that one. Kisumu is the second largest city in Kenya. That's false, right? False. All right. You need to get, oh, shoot. Okay. Which of the following is not, okay, so that's Mount Kenya. All right. Which of the following is not an attraction? Not that one. Museum, the museum. <laughs> the museum, okay. Uh, false. Okay, following is not Mount Kenya. Okay, which is the smallest park? That's the swamp. Experience the tea farms. Anybody know that one? I think that one is Karuchio or Kisumu. One of those two. I it's Karuchimo. Karuchimo. And then this is the museum. Yay! All right. Got another certificate, guys. All right. Well, I don't know if we're gonna finish. Let's let's run through these quick. All right, the rift. All right, the Great Rift is part of an intracontinental ridge system runs through Kenya north to south. Fresh water and soda lakes line the floor of the valley. Each offers scenery and bird life, including the world's largest flamingo. Um, population. Okay, so Kenya's Great Rift Valley, part of the continental, 3,500 miles across. All right, so the Kenya's Lake System, um, UNESCO World Heritage Site, valleys, shape. Sorry, I'm just going to run through these really quick because we have to get on the other train. Are you guys okay with that? Or do you want to do a whole nother day? Because I don't know if we'll be able to finish. Let's look and see. All right, flamingos, active travelers can explore the dormant volcanoes, 
Shores along provide those who want to relax an ideal for idyllic weekends. All right, so this is the Rift Valley. Okay. Beautiful scenery, the boat, the zebras. Next lesson. Finest lakes. Great Rift Valley is not only home to the world's finest lake, plays an important role in the Earth's natural history, a 6,000 mile crack in the Earth's crust that stretches from Lebanon to Mozambique. Uh, much of it's found in Kenya, where it has literally cut the country in two. Geographic wonder, and for that reason, the Rift Valley is distinctive and unique. Wow, beautiful, right? Attractions amongst um, it's the greatest features, Lake Barungo, the also all the lakes, wildlife, beaver, tree line, Lake Nakuro and Bangaroo have huge flocks of flamingos. Lake Bangaroo Baringo is home to 500 species of bird, scenic, freshwater. Uh, Lake Navasha supports healthy populations of hippos. The Rift Valley visitors will find the dramatic red cliffs of Hell's Gate. Hell's Gate National Park activities. In addition to visiting the lakes and enjoying the safari, visitors might wish to hike the Aruru Forest and the Crescent Island, a private island sanctuary in Lake Navasha and El Samir, a museum and home of late Joy Adamson, the wildlife conservation author of Born Free. Tour the flower farms and visit the geothermal spa at Ulcaria are also possible. The sweeping Rift Valley provides opportunities for unforgettable experiences given its pastoral uh, landscapes, breathtaking scenery region is excellent for hiking, trekking, as well as game viewing. Visitors can also take guided walks around the lakes, enjoy picnics, go bird watching near the lakes, community visits, and shopping at the farm stands is also a wonderful way to immerse oneself. How to get there? You can get there by air. Um, a region chartered uh, airstrip national park or through a private airstrip and then the road is popular way to get through to the region through rail once once can access access navasha through the standard gouge um, railway line which is currently being finalized okay what is the name of the museum and home to joy adamson the world-renowned wildlife conservant Conservatives. Is it Elsamir? Elsamir. Which experiences are available in the Great Rift Valley? Hiking, iconic safaris, photography. Let's say all, all of them. Um, Which is the freshwater lake in Great Rift Valley? Second. How many bird species? I figured that was 500. How can one access the Great River? Okay. All right, but we have to do all of them. So the first one. First one. Okay. Let me go back. Which experience are available? All of these. 500 birds. Which one is it? The first one, like na naiva. <laughs> Thank you. All of these. And Elsamir. Yay! Got another certificate. <laughs> All right. Next. I think they keep adding them on. Okay. Highest peak. Okay, get overview of the territory. So the highest, Kenya's highest peak scenery, central highlands from col colorful jungles to sloping farms, wind swept, uh, swept plains, huge draw for travelers. North of Nairobi is Mount Kenya, Africa's second highest peak towering 5,200 above sea level, recognized as World Heritage Site, 1997, forms part of Mount Kenya Tet National Park. The mountain provides a challenge for climbers, trekkers, and hikers. Where are the central highlands? Central plateau stretches Matthews Range and north down to Nairobi in the south and borders the Rift Valley to the west. 
It's forest and high altitude lakes, perfect for trout fishing and horse riding, are home to endangered wildlife species and the historic Mao Caves, legacy of the Kenya spirit. It is unique in that it is only snow-capped mountains straddling the equator. Northern East, Northeastern is home to one of Kenya's newest attractions, the Meru National Park. The park is an isolated, wild, and undisturbed heaven for the wildlife enthusiast and was reborn through concerted conserv conservation efforts. Further to the east, the little explored Basadani and Rahul reserves await exploration by those daring enough to take up the adventure. Beautiful La Capiti, La Pia um, Plateau and Matthew Ranges. You'll find stunning lodges, camps owned and run by the local communities that offer the last word in wilderness, luxury, and greater opportunity to get to know Kenya's least known cultures. So then you have the sites here to see. Beautiful, beautiful hiking. I want to do that. Kayaking. All right, next lesson. Unique selling points, often referred to upcountry, the Central Highlands are the home of Kikuru, who comprise the largest ethnic group in Kenya. Biggest draw here is Abadir National Park, home to well-known the Ark of the Treats and Treetop Lodges. Lodges, sorry. Home to well-known the Ark and Treetop Lodges, and of course, the Highlands boasts of Mount Kenya itself, second highest mountain in Africa. Climb Mount Kenya is one of classic rites passage of African travel. Main attractions, Central Highlands are the Abadir Ranges, as well as beautiful Mount Kenya Park, Abadirs, Maru, Lakes. Uh, you have Lake Alice, Rotunda, Tana, and Waterfalls, private ranches, conservation, and Old Pajeta, Luas, Rapids, Plateau, local tribes, and such, and the Amaru. Activities, much of the activity for tourists in Central Highlands understandably centered around the mountains of Abadir National Park and of course, Mount Kenya, which offer plentiful opportunities for hiking, climbing, even horseback riding along the verdant green foothills. Activities such as these are great ways to get to know the landscape. True adrenaline junkies may wish to go whitewater rafting on the Sagana River or zip lining in the forest canopy nearby. Experiences, in addition to adventure activities around Mount Kenya and Abadir and cultural experience, visitors to the Central Highlands may wish to call the glamorous Mount Kenya Safari Club a refurbished 1950s era hunting lodge in the Mount Kenya foothills. With beautiful dining room and bar, Tusk restaurant and terrace, once a private club, the counted Winston Churchill, Charlie Champlin, and Bing Crosby as members. It is now owned by Fairmont and offers a slice of Kenyan history and a dose of Hollywood glamour in the bush. Climbing Mount Kenya is one of the classic rites of passage for any traveler where one can climb to any of the peaks, weaving through towering spires, sheer cliff faces, jagged ridges, and snow-capped peaks. The diverse range of terrain and conditions make Mount Kenya a haven for climbers, hikers, and trekkers alike. The mountain consists of three principal zones, the Rocky Peak area and the mantle of glaciers and snowfields. The Alpine zone with its distinctive Giant vegetation and vast gentle lower slopes drenched in the mountain forest and bamboo jungle. While the 5199 meter summit is a difficult technical climb, the lesser peak of the point Lanana can be easily reached by any fit trekker. The trek takes um, between three to five days, though a fascinating world of forest, wildlife, and unique montane, montane vegetation, including pod carpus. Groundsel, and finally, one of the world's rarest sites, equator, e equatorial snow. There are three main routes to climbing Mount Kenya that ca cater to all trekkers visiting the mountain, naming, namely Naro Muro route, Siramon route, which is the most popular and considered as an easier route as it climbs relatively gradual with a group of sleeper sections and Chigoria route which is the most attractive trails for climbers, but a bit longer route as compared to other two. Best time for mountain climbing, Mount Kenya is climbed at all times of the year. However, if possible, it is best to avoid the rainy season that may start in mid-March and last through till mid-June, which is the long rains. Short rains from late October till December, 
And then the driest times is the mountain are usually January till mid-March and again through um, July through mid-October. Okay, another quiz. How high is Mount Kenya? Nope. <laughs> Which is the lowest peak of Mount Kenya? Okay, I, 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 which one is it? B, I think it is three. That's that's what I was gonna say. Nope. Oh my gosh, which do to which do conservancies offer that is different from parks? All of those. All of those. What activity can be done at the Central Highlands? Um. All of them. Which is the lowest peak? I think it's two. Millions. Was it? Yeah, I think it's Lanana. Let's try it. I've got to redo it again. Okay, so this is all of these. What experiences can be found? All of these. I'm going to try this one. It's Lanana. Lanana, all of these. And how high? 51? Yep. All right. Did you guys get it? You got another certificate. Did you guys pass? Almost done, almost. Look, it's almost to the end. <laughs> okay, let's do these quick two little ones here. All right, introduction to culture and heritage. I'm doing the, the three minute one just to see if we get done. Visitors can expect the Kenya's hospitable nature to enhance their travelers from the constant friendly Swahili greeting Jumbo. Uh, to receiving a safari wake-up call with a hand-delivered hot cup of Kenya coffee. Foreign visitors are interested um, to native Kenyans and Caucasian travelers in Swahili. Can easily draw friendly attention. Clients can experience personal attractions with Maasai, Saburu, Swahili, Chakana, Pocket, Amon, um, indigenous tribes throughout a village visit to learn about customs and life of an everyday Kenyan. They could even observe a real Maasai wedding if they so desire. Gathering insight into this living culture provides travelers an amazing understanding of this country and its people, many of whom live side by side with animals in nature. It's all part of Kenyan's travel experience. So you have the ethnic tribes. Uh, Kenya boasts a bold cultural diversity, natural diversity, home to more than 42 different ethnic groups. If you were to travel across the country, you'll see the Indian Ocean, towering mountains, and vast savannas. You will hear over 60 different languages. You'll taste unique flavors, many different types of Kenyan food, truly diverse and vibrant country. The Kenyan culture, which all has evolved over the centuries, is rich, very much alive. It can be seen in the visual arts, applied arts, Kenya food, music, dance, sports, fashion, theater, literature, and Kenya people. Art and craft, Kenyan culture can be seen through the arts and crafts um, designated by different communities. Made of locally available materials include wood carvings, bead necklaces, bracelets, masks, baskets, figurines. Nairobi National Museum, you can experience the rich cultural heritage through artifacts, prints, paintings done by local artists, and then music and dance. Every community in Kenya has their own music and dance. All you have to do is get a glimpse of the country's musical diversity, is tune into any one of the more than 10 vernacular radio stations. Various restaurants in town have themed nights where music from particular communities is exclusively played. Since the early 1990s, Kenya's contemporary music started to grow and today it's among the most vibrant in Africa. This can be experienced in the different cultural festivities in different parts of the country. Must attend cultural festivities and events are included in the list. Literature and theater, many books of Kenya that portray the country's rich culture. Some notable titles include Facing Mount Kenya by Jomo Kenyatta, Kenyan's first president, Wizard of the Crow by Najuri Rajong, Out of Africa by Karen Blixen, also known as pseudonymy, whatever, Isaac Dennison, 
which inspired the Oscar war winning movie, The Name Unbowed by Ruangari Mathi, the winner of the 2004 Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, remember, remember that. <sighs> Every year, the Kenyan National Drama Festival is held across the country. The co-curricular -cur activity, which is run by the Ministry of Education, aims to tap and nature, nurture creative talent among the Kenyan group, youth. And then you have fashion. The rich cultural fabric provides um, perfect canvas for creativity and fashion that has resulted in a lot of fashionable products produced in Kenya, whether it's for decorating homes, offices, open spaces, for daily use for wearing such as bracelets, clothing, accessories, for example, kiandos, woven handbags made by Sisal with leather trimmings are popular locally, internationally. Popular textiles include kangas, which are women's wraparound skirts and beautiful patterns, often with Kenyan proverbs imprinted on them and kikos, types of men's sarong that come in many different colors and textiles. Shopping in Maasai markets for fashion items and at fashion events such as Kenya Fashion Week where renowned Kenyan designers showcase their best pieces. All right, and also guys, if you want to jump over, I am recording this. Um, the uh, daily commissions is getting ready to get started. So if you wanna learn how to do that, I would recommend jumping over there. Um, just, but she will record it also, so you can watch a recording, but just wanted to let you guys know that, okay? All Thank right, you. you're welcome. Cause I, I, I wanna go ahead and finish this. I don't think we should come back to it since we're almost done, um, but I, I also don't want you guys to miss that because I want you guys making money today, okay? So um, Kenya is known for its spectacular beauty and visit offers the experience of a lifetime besides the chance to see the big game animals. The country holds seven UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The natural sites are designated um, by UNESCO as World Heritage Site because of the importance of cultural, historical, natural, and archaeological value. Cultural sites include the Lamu Old Town, Fort Jesus, the Sacred Kayas of Majanda, Timlik Ohinga Archaeological Site. The natural sites are Kenya's lake system in the Great Rift Valley, Lake Bagoria, Lake Nakuru, Lake Elementritadi, Lake Turkana National Parks, and Mount Kenya National Park Natural Forest. Lake Turkana being the most saline of East Africa's large lakes, Turkana is an outstanding laboratory for study of the plant and animal families. The three national parks can um, serve as a stopover for migrant waterfowl and major breeding grounds for the Nile crocodile, hippopotamus, variety of venomous snakes, kubi for a deposit, which is mammalian, molluscan and other fossil remains have contributed more to the understanding of paleo environment than any other site on the continent. The Lake Turkana National Parks were inscribed onto the World Heritage List in 1997. Breathtaking colors, flora and fauna, Lake Turkana National Park consists of Sibilio, the South and Central Islands covering a total area of 161,485 hectares all located within the Lake Turkana Basin, whose total surface area is 7 million hectares. The lake is the largest desert lake in the world. Okay, so Lake Turkana, um, uh, surrounded by an arid, seemingly extra ter terrestrial landscape that is often devoid of life. The long body of Lake Turkana drops down along the Rift Valley from the Ethiopian border extending 240 kilometers from north to south and 44 kilometers at its widest point with an average depth of 30 meters. It is Africa's fourth largest lake, fondly called the Jade Sea because of its breathtaking color. A discovery site at Lake Turkana at uh, Kuibi Fora, extensive paleontological find, sorry, um, finds have been made starting in 1969 with the discovery of Paranthropus bosai. The discovery of Homo habilis ha thereafter is evidence of the existence of a relatively intelligent hominid two million years ago and reflects the change in climate from moist forest grasslands to the present hot desert. 
These and many more discoveries have been made by NMK researchers in partnership with external parties. Today, all research collections are housed in M NMK and are available for further research. You have Mount Kenya National Park Forest with rugged glacier clad summits, forested middle slopes. Mount Kenya is one of the most impressive landscapes in East Africa. The National Park and Forest, founded in 1949, was added to the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The aim was to protect Mount Kenya along with its wildlife and environment. The natural environment is crucial as the natural habitat for the animal species that live in the area. It is also acts as a water catchment area that provides water to Kenya and is a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. Second highest peak in Africa, Mount Kenya straddles the equator at 193 kilometers northeast of Nairobi and about 480 kilometers from the Kenyan coast. At 5199 meters, Mount Kenya is, or miles, is the second highest mountain in Africa and is ancient and is an ancient extinct volcano. Lamu um, Old Town, oldest and best preserved Swahili settlement in East Africa, retaining its traditional function built in coral stone and mangrove timber. The town is characterized by the simplicity of structural forms, enriched by such features as inner courtyards, verandas, elaborately uh, carved wooden doors. Lamu has hosted major Muslim religious festivals since the 19th century and has become a significant center for the study of Islamic and Swahili cultures. Lamu Old Town was gazetted on 26, 1986 and added to the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 2001. Exploring the narrow streets and alleyways, the town is characterized by narrow streets and alleyways that only allow for movement by foot or donkey. The town's architecture and stone buildings are influenced by a fusion of Swahili, Arabic, Persian, Indian, and European building styles. Unlike other Swahili settlements, which have been abandoned along the East African coast, Lamu has continuously been inhabited for over 700 years. Lamu was once an important trading center in Islamic coastal East Africa, dating back to the 12th century. It is a major reservoir of Swahili culture whose inhabitants have managed to sustain their traditional values as demonstrated by the sense of social unity and cohesion. Lamu boasts of several historic sites, including the German Post Office and Lamu Museum and Lamu Fort. Then you have Majakenda Kaya Forest, consists of 11 separate forest sites spread over 200 kilometers along the coast. They contain the remains of numerous fortified villages known as Kayas of the Majunga Kenda people. The Kayas created in the 16th century, but abandoned by the 1940s are now regarded as the abodes of ancestry, ancestors revered as sacred sites and as such are maintained by councils of el elders. These sites were inscribed in the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 2008. Repositories of the Majunkenda people's spiritual beliefs spread out along um, around 200 kilometers of the coastal region of Kenya are 10 separate forested sites, mostly on low hills ranging in size from 30 to around 300 hectares in which are the remains of fortified villages, Kayas of the Majunkenda people. They represent more than 30 surviving Kayas. And then you have Kenya Lake System in the Great Rift. Um, Valley. Kenya uh, Lake System in the Great Rift Valley was added to the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 2011. It is a natural property of outstanding beauty comprising of three interlinked, relatively shallow lakes, Bagora, Nakura, and Elementida. Covers a total of 32,000 hectares. Some of the world's greatest diversity and concentrations of bird species are recorded within these relatively small lake systems. Astonishing landscapes, major tectonic and volcanic events have shaped the distinctive landscape, which is a place for discovery. Wildlife wonders. The lakes have large mammal populations and are recognized as valuable place for study eco ecological processes of major importance. Possible. It's possible to spot black rhinos, Rothschild's giraffes, greater kudus, 
All right, thank you, Olga. Again, appreciate it. Have a good holiday and happy birthday. All right, uh, kudos, lions, cheetahs. You know, these are kind of, you know, because they said, what, three minutes, five minutes? These are a lot longer than that. I don't know why they say that. <laughs> All right, pelicans, flamingos, and wildlife. For most of the year, up to 4 million lesser flamingos move between the three shallow lakes in an outstanding wildlife spectacle. Surrounded by hot springs, geysers, and the steep escarpment of the Rift Valley with its volcanic outcrops, the natural setting of the lakes provide an exceptional experience of nature. The lakes are home to 13 globally threatened bird species, some of the highest bird diversities in the world. It is the single most important foraging site for the lesser flamingo anywhere and major nesting breeding ground for the great white pelicans. Okay. All right. And that's the valley. Okay. Then you have uh, Fort Jesus Mombasa, architectural masterpiece built by the Portuguese at the end of the 16th century. Uh, Fort Jesus stands at the southern edge of Mombasa over a spur of coral rock. It was kept under Portuguese control for one century and is testimony to the first successful attempt by Western civilization to rule the Indian Ocean trade routes, which until then, had remained under Eastern influence. The historical site was uh, gazetted in on 12 December 6, 1970 and inscribed to the UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2011. Currently, one can relive the history of the fort through the sound and light snow show at the fort in the evenings. Architecture built by the Portuguese, the fort built by the Portuguese 1593 to 1596, to Giovanni Battista Carati's design to protect the port of Mombasa is one of the most outstanding well-preserved examples of 16th century Portuguese military fortification and a landmark in the history of this type of construction. The fort's layout reflected by the Renaissance ideal that perfect per, per, proportions and geometric harmony are to be found in the human body. The property covers an area of 2.36 hectares and includes the fort's moat and immediate surroundings. Fort Jesus Mombasa bears physical witness in its structures and subsequent transformations to the interchange of cultural values and influences between and among peoples of African, Arab, Turkish, Persian, and European origin who fought to gain and maintain their control over this strategic port. Now you have Timlik Urhinga Archaeological Site uh, was gazetted as National Monument April 6, 1982, added to the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Timlik Urhinga refers to frightening dense forests. Uh, Duloa language, Nalatic group who occupy the region, the stone structure enclosure has walls ranging from 10, 1 to 4.2 meters in height, which were built of loose stones and blocks without any dressing or mortar. Uh, built by communities, archaeological records of materials found within the site go beyond 500 years ago. Since the present, inhabitants of the area arrived probably some three centuries ago. Seems most likely that Bantus, who initially occupied the region prior to the arrival of Lewis, first built the stone structures. Abundant rocks of the hilly areas provide them with building materials to meet their security requirements. Subsequently, communities that moved into this region in the period between the 15th and 19th centuries carried out repair work and modification on the structures. However, all these episodes of occupation and repair did not interfere with the arch architecture and preservations of the structures. During the first quarter of the 20th century, the abandonment of Ohingi started um, a mass. No more stone structures were constructed and consequently some stone structures were reduced to mere traces of circumferences or disappeared altogether. Timlik Ohinga is one of the few stone structures that did survive. Okay, next lesson. Hey, where are we? All right, events and festivals. Kenya is a hot spot. Oops, sorry. Um, colorful and exciting events and festivals. Um, the rich and diverse, oops, 
this one. Okay, sorry. Uh, cultures found in destinations brings with them many events and festivals that celebrate the uniqueness of our art, fashion, sports, ceremonies, such as rites of passage, food. This makes for great travel experiences. They also provide a way of preserving these cultures from generation to generation. Travelers get a chance to interact with the Kenyans through these events and festivals organized within various remote locations, cities, and towns, with each one being um, as uplifting, vibrant, and colorful as the next. Besides celebrating, oops, sorry. Besides celebrating the diverse cultures and some of the events are focused on conservation on the environment, and wildlife in different parts of the country. Some of the events and festivals include Lamu Custom Cultural Festival held in November, Taboing Loi Lake Turkana Festival held in May every year, International Maralai Camel Derby held in August, Lua Marathon, Marathon held in June, Rusingi Island Festival held in December, Lamu Yoga Festival in March, and Stand Chart Nairobi held in October every year. Then you have museums and monuments and prehistoric sites. Cradle of humankind. Kenya is considered by many anthropologists to be the cradle of human mankind due to the fact that it has more fossil human remains, approximately 1,000 than any other country in Africa. Largest collection of human related fossils anywhere in the world, which can be found at Nairobi National Museum in Nairobi. To be sure, there are scores of archeological sites near Lake Turkana in the Northern part of the country. In fact, Lake Turkana National Parks are a UNESCO World Heritage Site as they are a location for one historic anthropological find after another. Together, the parks consist of Sibiloi National Park, South Island, and the Central Island National Parks and are located within Lake Turkana Basin, whose total surface area is over 27,000 miles. All right, the, large, the lake itself is the most saline lake in East Africa, largest desert lake in the world. Um, which one is this? Sorry. Da, da, da. Okay, Turkana. All right. Um, surrounded by the landscape and uh, frequently devoid of life, the long body of Lake Turkana extends along the Rift Valley from the Ethiopian border, 154 miles of north of the wildest and the widest point with the depth of 100 feet. Africa's fourth largest lake, commonly called the Jade, a green and gorgeous green color. Not only does the region possess distinct geological features, as many as 100 identified archaeological and paleontologic sites, but the current conditions at Lake Turkana National Parks provide habitats for a range of diverse flora and fauna. Island parks are breeding habitats of the Nile crocodile, hippopotamus, several snake species. Lake is also important flyway passage and stopover for several species of migrant birds. Museums and sites. Kenya has 20 national museums spread across the country. Museums showcase the diverse natural cultural heritage of the country that visitors can enjoy during their stay. Some of the top museums include Nairobi National Museum, Snake Park, Fort Jesus, uh, Karen Blixen Museum, Kasumu Museum, Kapaguro Museum, and Desert Museum. Kenya also boasts as the cradle of humankind humankind given its numerous findings of early man along the Rift Valley. Other sites are part of Kenya's rich heritage, for example, during the pre-colonial period. Some of these sites include um, the ruins, the Timla Konga, Songoi, and the others. <laughs> All right, let's pass this quiz. Wow. Which is the largest desert lake in the world? Turkana. Which of the following is a UNESCO World Heritage Site found in Kenya? This one? Yeah, thank you. Which of the following places found in Kenya has evidence of human fossils discovery? The Lamu? Kruby? Kubi? Thank you. Kenya is home of how many cultural tribes? 42, 44, thank you. 
How many UNESCO World Heritage Sites are found in Kenya? Very good. Very good, yet another certificate. So where are we at on our training? We almost done, almost done, almost done. Training. All right, four more left. Can we do it? We can do it, right? All right, introduction to Kenya coast. All right, Mombasa, place steeped in history, yet the same time, fascinating commercial and cosmopolitan port city. It is an island connected to the mainland by bridges and ferries, overlooks a wider harbor where commercial shipping mingles with traditional sailing dows. True heart of Mombasa is found in the exotic old town among the narrow winding streets and Arabian architecture. <clears throat> the air is filled with the scent of spices. Mombasa is a vibrant port city with diverse experiences to explore. This is a town where we are welcome and quickly absorbed into the great cultural melting pot. Travelers in Mombasa can explore the rich Swahili culture, ancient forts, narrow streets in the old town, or explore the nature parks and indulge in various water sport activities. Mombasa's pride itself as one of the most exciting cities of the African coast has a nightlife to match, making the coastal experience much more than just beaches. One can choose to enjoy the Kenya coast in north or south uh, that all boasts award-winning beaches in Africa, such as Diani and Watamu. Kenya's beaches are ideal for a variety of water sports activities, discovery of sea life, which can also be seen from a special glass bottom boat or up close by snorkelers and scuba divers. A place for activity and to relax, the Kenyan South Coast boasts of one of the best beaches in Africa, that is Diani. Besides Diani, there are a number of beaches such as Tiwi and Galu beaches. Kenya's beaches are ideal for a variety of water sports, discovery of sea life from special glass bottom boats or up close by snorkelers and scuba divers. Besides beaches and attractions include Magenda, 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 Kaya Forest, Shimoni Caves, islands such as Funzi Keys and Wasini Islands, and the Shimoni Caves, which is a tale of the ancient slave routes. Among North Coast, Tranquil Haven is home to several well-established resorts, many private guest houses. To the far north is Lamu, an island where history lives and breathes in the narrow streets it's the oldest Swahili settlement in East Africa. The North Coast offers a variety of opportunities for travelers to see um, and do such as bird watching in uh, Robuku, Soku, Koko, and Mida Creek water sports at the Watamu and Malindi Marine Reserves, kite surfing at she Shell, explore the geographical marvel at Hell's Kitchen, explore ancient ruins of Getty and Takwa, and enjoy sundowner sails aboard traditional dhows. North Coast Swahili culture in charming coastal towns. The North Coast, for example, features three destinations, namely Malindi, Watamu, and Lamu. Malindi is the center of the strip of idyllic tropical beaches, offering visitors a range of world-class resorts, quiet, relaxing hideaways. Further south is Watamu Resort, which is fronted by wide white beaches. Tranquil Haven is home to several established resorts, many private guest houses. To the far north is Lamu, an island where history lives and breathes in the narrow streets. Lamu is the oldest Swahili settlement in East Africa. All right, Lamu is the oldest. Okay, sites. Look at that. Look at that, wow, very nice. Okay, almost done. All right, let's go over this. Kenyan's Coast, one of the first places in Africa where visitors can experience both beach and safari experience at the backdrop of rich history. From the Arab influence Lamu town, which is one of the best preserved towns in East Africa to Portuguese built Fort Jesus in Mombasa, both attractions are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. All right, so there are a number of parks and attractions to visit on the Kenyan coast, such as Arabuko Soko National Reserve, 
one of the major remnant tropical forests that is found at the coastal region. You can also enjoy marine life by exploring the Malindi and Mombasa Marine National Reserves, as well as Watamu Marine Park and Reserve, where one can snorkel or do deep sea diving. Enjoy the colorful marine, marine life and coral reefs. Shimba Hills National Reserves is the only place in Kenya where one can see the sable um, antelope. And finally, the Tana River Primate Reserve, which shelters the endangered Munge Bay and the red colobus monkeys. Other attractions found in the coastal region include Mombasa Old Town, Diani Beach, the Saint Elephant Sanctuary, Fort Jesus, Heller Park, the Mjandikaya Forest, uh, the National Reserves, Benindi Marine Park, Hell's Gate, Getty National Museums, the Ruins, Archipelago, not forgetting the relaxing Mamba Nanjina Waterfront Park. Okay. Activities. Kenya coast is stunning tape, tapestry of sweeping white sand beaches, beautiful inland creeks, rivers, and shady inlets. Coastline is the perfect place for big sea Big, big game fishing, scuba diving, snorkeling, jet skiing. One can also do hiking, exploring the historic attractions as mentioned above. And then experiences in addition to sunbathing, water sport activities and safari. There are a number of unique coastal experiences that visitors can engage in. Village bike tours, humpback whale watching, historical tours, culinary enthusiasts can delve into the array of fresh seafood. Shellfish is particularly excellent here, as well as yellowtail tuna, sashimi, and fresh lobster. Travelers can spice the holiday by taking a ride on Mombasa, uh, Nairobi standard gauge uh, railway connecting the port of Mombasa to Nairobi shortens the passenger travel time that runs through two national parks, Savo National Park, both east and west. All right. Which of the destinations below is found at Kenyan Coast? <laughs> Want to move? Thank you. Which of the following is one of the best beaches found at the Kenya coast? Diani. Which one of the following is a UNESCO World Heritage Site found at the Kenya coast? Is it the Fort Jesus? Okay, very good. What activities can be done in the Kenya coast? Water sports? Thank you. Which one of the following is not an attraction found at the Kenya coast? Is it this one? Yep, that one, yay! Got it? Thank you so much. All right, got another certificate. All right, three more left, we can do this. All right, da, 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 da. Southern Kenya, okay, wild side with popular parks and reserves, annual wild beast migration in Maasai Mara. Eighth wonder of the world can exp be explored on foot, okay? I didn't know the eighth wonder of the world. About Southern Kenya, towards the east lies the salt lake of Mag Magadi, Along its shores, the archaeological treasures of Alagasalai. In addition to the Mara, there is Ambosali National Park, which is known as Kilimanjaro Royal Courtyard, with large herds of elephants up close. How fun. Look, he looks like he's posing. Ambosali is famous for its big game and its scenic, uh, great scenic beauty, and the landscape is dominated by the towering Mount Kilij Kilimanjaro. In addition, there's the Savo East and West National Park, wilderness the size of Jamaica along Mombasa Road that may be visited en route to the Kenya coast. Yeah, popular parks includes the country's most popular game parks, Masai Mara, Ambosali, Chului Hills, Savo East, Savo West. The landscape here is mainly savanna with low trees and shrubs and is at a lower elevation with often irregular rainfall. Animals, including the big five, lion, elephant, buffalo, leopard, and rhinos, rule the roost in the 9,200 square miles covered by these nine national parks, which provide an exceptional 
if not life-changing safari experience. These are the most visited parts of Kenya to which millions of international tourists flock every year, okay? Southern Kenya. So the sites, wow, look at that. How cool is that? All right, very nice. Beautiful. Okay, and the elephants. I love the elephants. Okay, next lesson. All right. Um, so this is unique selling point. Selling um, the big five as tourists are most likely to see all lion, elephants, buffaloes, leopards, and rhinos while visiting these parks. So you have... The attractions in this region include Masai Mara, Ambasoli, Chioli, Savu, West and East, as well as conservancies and Mount Kilimanjaro. Kil Kilimanjaro. These game parks are the most visited parts of Kenya countries, archetypal image for good reason. There's seasonal movements, especially in Masai Mara, wild beast migration are the dominant draw for tourists visiting to Kenya. Uh, activities going on a safari and all the associated with it are the ideal activities in these nine national parks. The wild beast migration is, of course, the most thrilling experience on safari in Kenya. And so if your clients can time their safari during the migration season, they should. Often called the greatest show on earth, um, safari goers who've seen it will never forget. So tell clients to bring the best camera and binoculars and prepare for a thrill of a lifetime. Experiences, iconic wildlife safaris on game drives, birding, cycling in the Mara, balloon safaris, natural walks, nature walks, hella tours, ecotourism, bush breakfast and dinners, epic sundowners, cultural experiences, destination weddings and scenic tours, among others. How to get there? Numerous airstrips within the parks, reserves, conservancies in this region allow travelers to connect from Nairobi daily. The road um, network to different attractions on the Southern Circuit, very good condition. Nairobi Masamara Road complete, which has greatly enhanced the road trip tomorrow which, with reduced time of about four hours. And then the rail, the Mombasi Nairobi uh, Standard Gouge Railway connecting the port of Mombasi to Nairobi. Whew. Masai Mara National Reserve in Southern Kenya is known as the eighth wonder of the world is a prehistoric site found in southern kenya region which of the above activities cannot be undertaken in southern kenya trekking because it's low right very good thank you what is ambasali national park known for that's it Thank you. How many national parks and game reserves are found in Southern Kenyan region? Yay! Very good, another certificate. You are so good. All right, two more and we got it. We got it, we got it. All right, Northern Kenya now. Kenya's wild, arid north is the ideal destination for those to really looking to really get away from it all. From baking desert to plains to the wild shores of Lake Turkana, this is adventure country. Lake Turkana, also known as the Jade Sea, is the world's is also known as Jade Sea is the world's largest desert lake and World Heritage List. Northern Kenya has rich cultural heritage, approximately 14 local tribe travelers get a chance to take a front row seat at Kenya's wildest race, the Marala Camel Derby, or visit the beautiful Samburu and Shaba National Reserves, home to many rare northern species. The sights to see, okay. So must be the lake there, very dry. Okay, don't really care to go there, I don't think. All right, unique selling point. Da -da -da. Cradle, um, 
the mankind is a unique selling proposition for Northern Kenya, supported by rich culture of Northern Kenya, breathtaking landscapes, Lake Turkana, the largest desert lake known as the Jade Sea, Lake Turkana Desert Museum, Turkana Cultural Festival, Northern Kenya Tribes, Lake Turkana National Park. You have the Sibali National Park, Central Island National Park, and South Island National Park, which are a UNESCO heritage site. Samburu National Reserve, Shaba National Reserve, Sibalu National Park, Kubi for a museum, the Cradle of Mankind, the El Molo, Saburo communities, among others, Rendell Camel Trains, Chalbi Desert, Community Conservancies, and Central Island Park. Okay. All right. Events and festivals. Tabaglor Cultural Festival in August through December. Lake Turkana Cultural Festival, Long Yangalani, May through June, and Marala, an International Camel Derby in August. <laughs> what the camels running around activities and experiences iconic safaris vast parks um, reserves conservancies and region photography safaris and filming camel safaris fly camping hella tours horseback safaris hiking trekking a day at Subaru warrior warrior experience cultural experiences birding experience epic sundowners bush breakfast along the Asar Awaso Nara River Desert Safaris in Chalbi Desert and Heritage Tour in Turkana. Air and Road. The region can be assessed through numerous airstrips and conservancies, reserves, the town, Ladwar, and private charters. Road. The region can also be assessed by road. The road network is in great condition. Which of the following activities cannot be undertaken in Northern Kenya region? Right water rafting. Yeah. How many local tribes are found? I think 14. Lake Turkana is found in northern Kenya. Which of the following site is a UNESCO heritage site? What is it? Siboli, that's what I thought. Thank you. Chalbi Desert is found in Northern Kenya. Yay! <laughs> All right, we're doing good. One more, one more. Yes, bird watching. Oh my gosh, this has been a long one. Again, I appreciate you staying on board with me. All right, bird watching in Kenya, prime destination, over 1,100 species. Introduction, tremendous geographical range gives Kenya a variety of climate landscapes, hence the second highest number of species in Africa. Kenya holds the bird watch record, world record of 342 species seen in 24 hours. From the world's uh, biggest bird, the ostrich, to spectacular flamingos that congregate in their millions um, at the various lakes of the Great Rift Valley and camouflage, um, and camouflage them in pink. Kenya holds some remarkable bird sightings that you have to see them to believe. With 11% of the world's species, some 1,089 different varieties, Kenya's birding is one of the best in the world. It is not unusual for birding trips to record 300 to 600 different varieties on a short trip or to record more than 120 at a particular site on a single day. The variety of birds in Kenya is made possible by the favorable climate, diverse habitats and geographical features that make it suitable migratory route for birds. Even without venturing outside Nairobi, Kenya's capital, more than 600 resident and mig migratory bird species are found more than in any other capital city and more than in, in, in most countries. Bird watching is um, good all year round in Kenya. The rainy season of April and November coincide with the migration of birds from and to Europe and Asia. And some of the top days totals have been recorded at that time. 
Migrants make up only about 10% of the Kenya's bird life. Spectacular birds of the bush, guinea, fowl, go away birds, rollers, and barbets. Two mentioned, but a few are active all year. To see Kenya's rarest indigenous and unfortunately endangered birds, the bird enthusiast needs to seek out forests or highland grasslands tucked away amongst various farmlands. A Rabuco Soko forest near Malindi tops the list with six threatened bird species um, of the Sokoki Scops owl, Sokoko pipit, spotted ground thrush, east coast akalat, Amani sunbird, and Clark's weaver. Kenya is a prime destination for bird watching holiday at any time of the year. Between October and February, many Palarctic migrants come to Kenyans, Kenya's marine and inland shorelines. Many swallows, terns, and waders will be found during this time, whilst between June and July, weavers and bishops are in breeding plumage, and many Southern African migrants visit. Kenya's national parks make excellent centers for bird watching in Kenya, the Maasai Mara for the rosy-throated longclaw and magpie shrike. The Saburu is the rare shining sunbird and pink breasted lark and Nairobi for the northern pied babbler and Pangani longclaw. Kenya's handful of endemic um, include the Tara River cysticola and the Abadair cysticola, Hines pied babbler, Williams lark, Sharps pipit, and Clark's weaver. The diverse range of habitats supports a great diversity of bird species, makes bird watching holiday and Kenya very rewarding. All right, Kenya's great rift valley is renowned for its biodiversity and with over 400 species of birds known um, to frequent its skies. This one of the best places in the country to enjoy successful bird watching holiday. There are also several excellent birding areas around Lake Victoria. Best locations for incredible birding. Um, you have the Rift Valley, the Nakuro National Park, the Lake Baringo Rift Valley. Over one third of Kenya species have been recorded here. Um, Bagoria, bird watching at a unique natural environment with geysers and hot springs. Rift Valley, uh, you have the Navasha, the Kakamega Forest, Lake Victoria and respective islands. Um, uh, okay, what's this? This that doesn't show a thing. Okay. All right. Some of the other areas, including the forest islands at the top of the Taita Hills near Voy, is home of beautiful but critically endangered Taita thrush and Taita apollos, as well as endangered Taita white eye. Sharps, long claw, and abadir, um, Cristalca cola native and endangered live in the highland grasslands near the Abdir mountain range in western Kenya. Kakamega forest is a little patch of Guino, Guineo Congolian rainforest in Kenya. Among the many rainforest species found are spectacular taracos and hornbills and the tiny endangered turners aroma lamella. <laughs> the scarce and threatened papyrus yellow warbler is found in papyrus swamps on the shores of Lake Victoria, alongside the papyrus ganalak, white range warbler, and papyrus canari, all papyrus endemics. Then you have the guides. Local bird guides are available at numerous sites and are the best aid for locating and identifying the many species. They live at or near these sites and their birding interest is nurtured by that association with visiting scientists, birders, and added to by um, some formal training. It is advisable to contact the local guides association if you will be spending time at a specific site. By using local guides, you increase your bird sighting success. More importantly, you will be supporting the conservation of the site by the involvement of the local community in the sustaining the area's ornithology. Professional bird guides and tour operators who can accompany you on safari also provide additional guiding services that will broaden your birding experience. One can also purchase 50 top birding sites in Kenya book from Nature Kenya, which details everything you need to know about birding in Kenya. You have the Kenya bird lilac breast roller. 
Um, did you know Kenya has a national bird? Very beautiful. Look at that. The most common guess around is that the rooster, but no, Kenya's unofficial national bird is the beautiful colored lilac breasted roller. Its Swahili name is Kambu or Kole. Kole, Kole. The bird uh, plumage consists of about eight colors boasting lilac, turquoise, the most men would have trouble identifying. These wide array of colors are supposed to represent the diversity in Kenya's in terms of culture, sceneries, attractions, and the country's uniqueness. How cool is that? The bird is also found in most regions in the country. Interesting, unlike most other birds where males are the most attractive, for the lilac breasted roller, both females and males are equally dazzling. You cannot tell the difference by the looks. There are no de um, demorphic. Demorphic? Demorphic. Okay. Cool, that's good to know, right? All right, Nairobi and its environments. Okay, let's go down. So Nairobi, you are guaranteed to find birds everywhere you travel, a stroll in hotel gardens, a trip to Nairobi National Park, um, gardens, uh, grounds. Sorry, I don't know why it keeps going like that. Um, trip to Nairobi National Park or grounds, the museum likely to turn up um black bright black and yellow weavers tiny iridescent sunbirds resembling flying jewels secretary uh, bird bustards and mouse birds with long tails which are unique to africa the giant marabou storks a frequent visitor to the city now nest on the uh, acacia trees along the streets a surprisingly wide range of habitats can be visited on day trips from Nairobi. These include Lake Navasha in the Rift Valley, the dry bush around Ologa Sali prehistoric site, and the escarpment forest in the foothills of the Abadir mountain range. In Magadi, the flamingo breeding grounds here are an important bird area and frequently visited by specialist birding safaris. Other species of interest recorded here include the African uh, spoonbill, Cape teal, great egret, and advocate. Besides the Nairobi National Park, other key bird finding birding sites in and around Nairobi include Karua Forest, Nairobi Abertrum, oh my gosh, the Forest Sanctuary, and City Park. Okay, next, Southern Kenya, Ambasili um, National Park, Southern Kenya. Ambasili is popular with birders and elephant watchers. Over 400 species, including at least 40 raptors, have been recorded. Notable species include the lesser flamingo, many ducks, darters, and heron nests in the wetlands, and birds of prey, including small population of martial eagles. Maasai Mara National Reserve, Southern Kenya. Mara is equally popular with birders and specialist birding safaris. Of the over 500 recorded species, notables include the corn cake, corn crate, gray crested helmet, shrike, lesser kestrel, Madagascar, squawkar heron, saddle billed stork, secretary bird, ostrich, white headed vulture, among more common species, lilac breasted roller, yellow billed oxpecker, among the large birds, and marshall and crowned eagles. Savo East and Savo West National Parks, Southern Kenya. Vast area is excellent for birding country, popular with the specialist uh, birding safaris. Notable species recorded include the rare bassar reed warbler, Friedman's lark, ostrich, blue quail, violet wood hoopoe, marshall, and crowned eagle. Now you have central Kenya. Mount Kenya is all, um, and its surrounding forests are good birding country. Notable species recorded here. Include the lesser kestrel, Jackson's widow bird, Abbott starling, Jackson's Franklin, Hunter's cysticola, the crowned eagle, African grass, grass owl, and Cape eagle owl. Abadir's National Park, Central Kenya. The bird rich um, Abadirs are very popular with birders and specialist birding safaris. At least 200 species have been recorded, including African green ibis. Um, African cuckoo, hawk, cape, eagle, owl, mountain buzzard, and heartlubs turaco. Rare species include the scarlet tufted sunbird, long tailed wood, widow bird, African grass owl, and the abadir cysticola on the moorlands. 
Maru National Park, Central Kenya, excellent birding country becoming popular with specialist birding safaris. There's been a recording sightings of saddle billed stork, hells fishing out and African fin foots in the swamps along the river. And then Northern Kenya, um, oops, sorry. Uh, Samburu, Shaba and Buffalo Springs National Park. This area is very popular with birders and specialists, birding, um, safaris, Saburu, and Buffalo Springs National Reserves have over 380 recorded species with similar numbers in Shaba. Notable species recorded include the arid endemics such as Donaldson Smith Sparrow, Weaver, Shining Sunbird, and the Bristle Crown Starling, many Voltron Guinea, Guinea Fowl, several hornbill species, Somali ostrich, and rare species such as Taita falcon, Magatori um, kestrels, and Williams larks. Then you have uh, Turkana, northern Kenya, important bird area, um, frequently visited by specialist birding safari. Species of interest recorded here include large populations of pink. Um, back pelican, greater flamingo, sir winged plover, plover, and the little stit, as well as rare species such as saddle billed stork, banded snake eagle, and African skimmer. And then the Kenya coast, Malindi, Watamu, Kenya coast. Malindi, Watamu is very popular with birders, specialist birding safaris. Maida Creek, along with the beaches of Watamu, are feeding area for Western. Reef heron, lesser crested tern, shorebirds, such as the sandering curfew sand piper and greater lesser sand plover. Offshore whale island and an occasional breeding ground for rosette and brittled terns. To the north, the Sabaki River mouth attracts Madagascar, Pradencole, Sudigol, and the lesser crested and sanders tern. Outside Malindi, near the outside, oops. Outside Malindi, near the Marafa Depression, is the Dakacha Woodland, considered an important bird area and sanctuary for southern banded snake eagle, Sakoki Pipit, and Clark's Weaver. And then Tana River, Delta Canyon Coast, excellent area for birding. The Delta itself attracts an average population of around 20,000 waterbirds, including pelicans, egrets, storks, flamingo, geese, and many shorebirds. Surrounding forests are also rich with bird life, including the rare southern banded snake eagle, east coast acolyte, Melindy pipit, basra reed, warbler, pels, fishing owl, violet wood, hoopoe, scaly babbler, and of course the Tana River cistola, cistola. South Coast Kenya. The South Coast is a perfect destination for coastal birding. The forest at Diani is a refuge for fishers to Rocco. Southern banded snake eagle, little yellow flycatcher, and the um, aluguru violet back sunbird. Nearby, Dazombo Hill is home to the Digo Kaya and is also home for the rare Sakoki pipit. The African crowned eagle and around 33 other forest dependent species. Offshore, the Kisiti Mizpunkenti Marine Park has an, an important population of rare Rosiata terns, among other pelagic um, birds centered on Kasiti Island. Shimbi, Shimba Hills, Kenya Coast, important bird area frequently visited by specialist birding safaris. Species of interest recorded here include Southern Banded Snake Eagle, Fishers Taraco, uh, Sakoka Pippa, East Coast Akala, and Migrat 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 Migratory, sorry, Eurasian cuckoos. Yeah, I feel cuckoo. Kaita and Chula Hills, Southern Kenya. Very popular with birders and specialist birding safaris. Notable species recorded include Abbott starlings en route from Mount Kenya to Kilimanjaro, Shelley's Franklin, orange ground thrush, and several rare raptors. Airs hawk eagle, crowned eagle, Marshall eagle, the Taisha Hills are also a very important bird reserve with many endemics, including the Taita falcon, Taita thrush, Taita white eye, and the Taita upalus. Um, Arubaku Soka Forest, a uh, very important area for birding among the en endemics. Here is the Soka Kaskops owl, the world's rarest owl, Soko Kaskops. The species is only found in this forest, although there have been reported sightings in the Usambara Mountains in northern Tanzania. 
The highly exclusive bird is more often seen than heard, but the chance of sighting makes this a real mecca for birders. Even if you don't locate a scops, there are plenty of other species to be seen, including the rare Clark's weaver, Fisher's turaco, southern banded snake eagle, and Amani and plain blackbirds. Other key bird sightings um, at the Kenya coast include Meta Creek, Heller Park, uh, Najuni Natural Nature Sanctuary, Lake Jipe, and Sabaki River est Estuary. Western Kenya, Mount Elgin. This is an important bird area frequently visited by the specialist birding safaris. Species of interest recorded here include the slender billed starling, sharp's long claw. claw Crowned eagle, ringed neck Franklin, striped rough tail, rest, red chested owlet, thick billed honey guide, toro olive green bull, and purple throated cuckoo stripe. Kakamega Forest, Western Kenya. Main attraction of bird life, the forest is a unique environment, not just in Kenya, but in Africa. A number of relic uh, species found here, including the Angsaurus green bull, blue headed bee eater. Chapin's flycatcher, Turner's aromola. Other notables include the red chested owlet, least um, honey guide, great blue turaco, banded snake eagle, crowned eagle. Kakamega is a popular destination for birders, well set up for bird watching safaris. Lake Victoria, several excellent birding areas around Lake Victoria. Main areas of interest are the swamps, Kusa. Um, Kokuda, Dunga, and within Ruma National Park, the swamps are one of the last refuges of the endangered papyrus gonalic and papyrus yellow warbler. While Ruma is the only place in Kenya where the migra migratory blue swallow has been sighted. And then Rift Valley, Lake Baringo, um, important bird area frequently visited by specialist birding safaris. Species of interest recorded here, Jackson's and Hemprick's hornbills, um, bristle crowned starling, water birds, including Goliath heron, white-backed duck, African skimmers and darters, El Begoria National Reserve, Rift Valley, important bird area, largest population of flamingos, other species of interest recorded here are black necked uh, greb, African darter, white necked vulture, Af um, African fish eagle. Best way to see bird life in this area is to travel around the lakeshore. The acacia forest and cliffs are both rich and bird with bird are both rich birding country. <sighs> almost done, almost done. All right, Elementata, Rift Valley, considered an important bird area, frequently visited by specialist birding safari species of interest. Recorded here include both lesser and greater flamingo, remarkable Jackson widowbird, gray quest, crested helmet shrike, both martial and crowned eagles have been sighted here. Navasha Rift Valley, important birding area, entire region, a popular destination, special birding tours. Navasha has over 400 recorded species. Oops, sorry. Um, the, oops, sorry. Keep going. The waters of the lake obviously attract many water birds, including the continent's highest concentration of African fish, fish eagles, many Goliath heron, jacanas, peed and malashi king fisher, red knob coot, spoonbills, little grab, rare maca duck, African darters, saddle billed stork. The shores and forests of the lake are also excellent birding territories, while the cliffs of Hell's Gate National Park are an important nesting area for many raptor species. Nakuru, uh, Rift Valley, greatest attractions, and this is a common stop for specialist birding safaris, apart from the obvious greater and lesser flamingo, apart um, species of interest recorded here are great white pelican, black neck little greb, as well as rare martial eagle, lesser crestal, and Madagascar squawkin erin. All right, let's do this. What percentage of wildlife reside in Kenya? 90? What percentage of world? I'm going to say 90. No, it's not 90. It's not 90. All right, which of the following is the Kenya bird? That is the lilac breasted. What, which is the best time for birding experience? Year round. How many species of birds are found in Kenya? What percentage of the world's bird life reside in Kenya? Thank you. 
Where can you see rich bird life in Kenya? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Yay. Okay, we're done, right? We're done, right? Are we done? Are we done? Completed, completed. Let's see. Training completed, completed. We did it all. Yes, thank you. All right. So I need you to send me, I'm going to send you $30 for being with me till the end. Okay. I'm going to send you $30, Cash App, PayPal, Zelle, whatever. Go buy lunch or something. But thank you, thank you, thank you for staying with me. Congratulations if you guys are watching the recording. Um, so we catch flights. What is your name? I'm sorry. You're welcome. Of course. Shawnee. Okay, Shawnee Blivens completed this whole course with me. So thank you, thank you. We catch flights, follow her. And again, congratulations. Let me know where to send you $30. I hope you have an amazing, amazing holiday. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing you on Tuesday for California. Thank you so much and congratulations. I wondered, so so I guess we don't get one full certificate. We just get the, the full or all 20 of them or something. Let me look and see really quick. I want to check the email before we disconnect and see if we get anything on email saying, you got it. But yeah, that was a long one, guys. That took three hours today. We were supposed to, and we did, we did finish it. So thank you. All right, I don't see it yet, but again, I wanna see your certificate. Congratulations, and I'll talk to you soon.